I therefore see myself also as part of you because I'm also in the numeracy aspect of disciplines. Therefore, accounting moves a little bit as different from what mathematics is out to accomplish. Mathematics in itself appears to be the tool for all disciplines. But accounting still towards doing some things that will make the society what it ought to be. Because no society can live without money, without finance, without funding, without projects, without do many, many things that can never be accomplished without accounting and without accountants. And that is where your discipline, to me, is very, very important. And therefore, I, therefore I want to challenge you this morning, this is my very short address, I want to challenge you briefly. Because what we are seeing in the society today, this level of degeneracy, particularly in our economic platforms, this level of unbearable fraudulent practices that are eating deep into the fabric of the society, they are traceable to accountants. I'm sorry to say that. They are traceable to accountants. As I said here today, I'm a vice chancellor. I've been vice chancellor of some universities before I, before I came here. No vice chancellor can steal successfully without the conspiracy of the bosser. Am I correct? No accountant, no, no VC can steal successfully without the conspiracy of because no, what does he know in accounting? And therefore, no president, no minister, no governor can defraud the state just like that without the active collaboration of accountants, auditors, those who are there to, to, to balance that. They are the people that will do it. It is not the governor. It is not the VC that does all those things. I therefore challenge you as accountants with the following. Number one, try more to make sure that this is your discipline of accounting, of finance. This is your very enviable profession. Continue to gain more acceptability. Let it continue to gain more acceptability. Don't let it be a discipline which is to be very enviable and they'll be pointing to that discipline. They say they, they are the people that are destroying the nation. They are the people that are corrupting the nation. I don't want to be too specific. It was all over the news recently. Those who are in this part of discipline, who should help society in the midst of this terrible financial situation in this nation, then you hear that they have stolen so, 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 so billions. So, so billions. And these are people who are supposed to help the nation to manage its accounting system. Please, my dear young, prospective, great accountants, don't envy such people. They are the people destroying the nation. I pray as we grow, you will not be one of the destroyers of this nation in the name of Jesus Christ. So from this, your young, tutelage age, Make sure that you are going to join the crusade that will make this your discipline, number one, more acceptable. Number two, it should be more accountable. People they say it's accounting and finance, you should be more accountable. Now, whatever you are doing, whether you are an accountant in a company, whether you are the auditor, whether you are the finance director, whatever you may be doing, make sure that every one of your actions you want to be more accountable. Listen to me. This is a faith-based university. We have been teaching you uh, in the way of the Lord. And therefore, I will not pretend to be quiet on this. That whatever you are doing, you must be accountable to God. So the first point of your accountability will be to God. And then you must be sure too that you are accountable to your company. Anything you are doing, whatever you want to put your hand on, 
You should be able to ask yourself, is this thing right? Am I to put my hand? Can I stand right and say, yes, I did this one. I'm accountable for this. Whatever you are doing as an accountant, as those in, in the finance discipline, maybe you are working in banking or whatever, be sure that you make your profession to be more acceptable, acceptability, to also have more accountability. I'll still mention one or two more on that. You must make your profession more, to, 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 to continue to be more and more, to have more accessibility. Let it have more, let it be accessible. Don't make it too closed. For me to say this one, there was a time I envy particularly shattered accountant. I envy shattered accountant. I know as now I'm too old to say I'm going to dust my my mathematics and say I want to go and read accounting. No, I'm not going to say I don't envy you to that point. I've got in my own career. But I I have shattered accountant. But I've been privileged too. When some of our uh, shattered accountants are doing some things and they have problems in statistics or whatever, and that, that all those have been privileged also to even assist some of them. But the point I'm making is this. Even as chartered accountants, we must, particularly the, this is your very enviable society, I can or Anna or whatever, don't close it. Don't let it be closed to prospective people that are interested in becoming chartered accountants. When I was younger than this, in, in this way I was hearing, I thought because some of our people will just do I can and all of them just feel like that. And then they'll be repeating it. They'll be repeating it. Ah, my thought was that, why are they closing the door? Is it that they have quota? That this year, whether they are angels, only 10 will pass. That was my idea. But when I started growing, maybe I started to know that maybe there are some mathematical or technical aspects that people don't know. However the case may be, I just want to seize this opportunity because I believe my young students here, many of you, many of you are registered for ICANN, these professional courses, I want to plead with those who are teaching it. I want to plead with those who are teach them very well. Expose them to things that will make them to pass. Guys, if around 20 of my students next up for this uh, accounting project or ICANN, I want to hear that 20 of them pass meritoriously. I want to challenge that teacher to please teach, my, teach them, let them pass. I want to celebrate certain accountant when they are graduating. I want to hear that this one uh, made a first class in physics and also shattered as an accountant. I, I desire that one. And if we work together, it shall happen. Therefore, I also pray for more accessibility. And the last on that is that I've mentioned that a little bit. Your discipline is a discipline that is envied by many people. It is adorable. It is, is that many people cannot just do it, but it's a discipline that is adorable. I call that one adorability. Let me tell you, when God has placed you in that type of discipline, you must always appreciate God. Work hard. I want to challenge students. It is not easy to achieve success. It is not easy to, uh, to, to make it in life. Now God has placed you to be part of this great uh, association, if it's association or you know, having this type of program. Many people desire it to be an accountant. Many people decide to work in the banks or to have all this financing opportunity. Don't have it. You that now have it, take advantage of it. Work very hard. Be disciplined. Don't mix yourself with some few students that anywhere you put them, they want to just behave anyhow. Some will not go for lecture. Some will not prepare for exam. Some will not do what they should do. Don't be part of them. Let God know that you appreciate him. That you are doing this type of course and that by the grace of God, I will finish well and finish at the right time. And I pray that to be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. I therefore want to sincerely, once again, appreciate the organizers of this program, particularly the students, for this your student uh, accounting and finance day. I want to appreciate our dean, a very amiable uh, dean, and the head of the department, and all the other academic staff who are supporting one way or the other to make sure that this program is successful, and most especially our very eminent visitors, our very eminent professionals who are here to greet this occasion. I want to say thank you very sincerely. 
My dear students, thank you very sincerely. My prayer for you is that you will finish well. You will make it as accountants and financing ma financial managers. Thank you very much and God bless you. Can we please give a standing ovation and put our hands together as he makes his way back to his seat? Thank you very much, sir. Like he said, come to you. Like he said, we should be disciplined and we should not enlist other accountants who help in the destruction of this nation. Thank you very much for that, sir. We will now have our panel, our panelist lecture. But before that, I would like to call on Ms. Ebong Favor and Ms. Adebi Olua Toyosi to take their citations. Good morning, everybody. She's a United Nations and African Union Special Joint SDG Humanitarian Ambassador for Societal Development, an international airport professional, a pioneer Nigerian female trained and accredited by the Global International Civil Aviation Organization and the Airport Council International. She's also an accredited management trainer and attended the airport executive leadership program of Concordia University, John Morrison Business School, Montreal, Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry for that um, slight um, disruption and interruption. Sorry for that. So, um, please, we, according to the program that you have, you, you discover that what we have now is supposed to be the, the lecture of the guest, guest speaker, right? So, uh, we're actually waiting for the guest speaker to arrive. So, we have our guest speaker here with us in person of... Um, Mrs. Edememe Oladiji Wusu. You are welcome. So, um, I've taken permission from um, Ambassador Mrs. Vivian that um, the guest uh, speaker can go ahead with her, with her lecture. So now we have the citation of the guest speaker. Thank you very much. We remain standing while I read the citation of the guest speaker. Mrs. Edememe Olajuju Wusu is a purpose-driven woman, 
and coach who is passionate about helping women evolve into their best selves. She absolutely loves Jesus, realizes that she's nothing without him, and is in, for, in forever in awe of his mercies and grace. She's a senior manager in KPMG, with over 13 years corporate experience as a tax and human resources professional, a two-time winner of the tax division's manager of the year award. She prides herself as being a purposeful and people-oriented leader. As a coach, she helps individuals rewire their mindsets so they can rise above limiting beliefs, thrive and fulfilling purpose. She also inspires individuals to take control of their lives through her Take Charge of Your Life conference, which debuted in 2021. An ardent believer in giving back to the society, she actively volunteers with Belefu Nigeria with Eroms, a CSR initiative that focuses on capacity building poverty alleviation and nation building. She's also a volunteer career mentor with Dear Young Professional Network, a phenomenal community helping young people accelerate their career growth and be well-rounded professionals. She was recently awarded 2021 Coach of the Year by the Iconic Brand Awards, TIBA, nominated for the Strategic African Women in Leadership. 2021 Trailblazers Award and recognized as one of the top 100 career women in Nigeria 2022 by Night Chicks. She's married to her best friend Ola DG and they have two adorable daughters who they are raising to be purpose driven, fearless and kind. I welcome to the podium Mrs. Edemene Ola DG Wusuk. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's such a pleasure to be here. It's such a pleasure to be here. Let me start by sincerely apologizing for coming late. I sincerely apologize. Um, some things just came up this morning and they just altered my plans. I'm so sorry, it's not in my nature. And I want to apologize again to the panel because I know that my lateness is going to alter their schedule. Please accept my apologies. Thank you. Please sit. You know, when I, walk, when I came in while driving in, it just reminded me of those years when I was in school. Um, I, I attended Covenant University, and I was there from 2003 to 2007. So it just reminded me of those days when I was in school, and I haven't been to Covenant since I graduated. So driving in just brought back those memories. I'm so happy to see you all. Please, one minute. So I'm going to be presenting today on how to help you be more employable as you prepare for the world of work. You guys are familiar with the topic, right? Awesome. Uh, so when you saw the topic, is it okay if I come down? Okay, thank you. So when you saw the topic, did you think, oh, I'd like to get this session? Learning expectations. Did you have any learning expectations? I want to get this from the session. I want to get this from the session. Do we have expectations that you'd like to share with me? You want, thank you. Well, when I heard of the topic of today, I was expecting to learn a lot, actually. I was learning, expecting to learn a lot about employability skills. I was expecting to know more about what it takes to be competitive, to be employable in the competitive market. Thank you. She expected I should learn what it takes to be competitive in the employability market. Thank you. Or what it takes to be employable in the competitive market. Yeah, mix that up. Okay, before I start, I'll tell you three reasons to learn. 
three reasons why people learn. The first reason that people learn is for information. Oh, let me just come here and see what the guest speaker wants to say. Let me just come here and hear what he say, so that it will not be like I didn't come. And you know people like that, who, who are in 200 level now, but they don't remember what they learned in 100 level. Or they are in 300, so already giggling. Because it's lacram, apple, the pouring, there's nothing left. That's the first reason why people learn. And I hope there's nobody in the room who falls in this category. The second reason why people learn is for impartation. What's the first reason? What's the second reason? Good. Now, the impartation goes in terms of the information, and it says, I know that I will have to teach this thing. So I'm learning because I will have to teach someone else. And so the people in that category, for example, would be um, who teach tutorials. Do you guys have taught something, the teach a tutorial to help people understand? And when second level, which is listening to learn, understanding depends on me. Right? And to tell you that after my presentation, concentrate, I want you to act like, oh, after this, I am going to have to make to the VC. Now, there's the third and best reason why people learn. And it's for application. Application. Let me give you an example. Um, who studied me mechanical engineering, right? What course? Mechanical engineering. The person's car breaks down. What does the person do? I can't hear. Sorry? Is that what they typically do? Typically do. Even though they run mechanical engineering, but they'll call the mechanical. Why is the mechanic able to fix it? Why is the mechanic able to fix it? Because he's able to apply what he has learned. Okay, because he's able to apply what he has learned. Now, when the mechanic was going through his apprenticeship, he knew or more well now. I'm going to be an apprentice forever. And I don't want to be an apprentice forever because when I finish, when I do my freedom, I can set up my own shop and be making my own money. So whatever he's learning, he's learning with the view of, I have to learn it fast. I have to be able to apply it so that I can set up shop. The mechanical engineer is not necessarily doing it because he will have to repair his own car. He's doing it because I want to get it that. So three reasons why people learn. And and it's important that you learn with a view to apply. Learn with a view to what? Apply. Because trust me, the panelists are going to be giving you um, practical tips that you can apply. When my presentation comes up, you will see that the tips are practical as well. And these are things that I wish I knew or paid attention to while I was in school. So you guys are actually very honored to be here. And I hope that you will make the most.
which is strange. Yeah. But I'm going to send the slides to Dr. Erin so he can share with us. I just wish um, you guys could see it on screen. Okay. okay. Now, we've already talked about our expectations. Um, a lady shared that she wants to learn how to be more um, employable in the competitive world of work. I also ran us through the three reasons why people learn information, impartation, and application. And I said that the best is application. So um, the topic I was given is enhancing employability skills of business graduates in the competitive market. And I have five tips to share, but I will be honing down on one. So I'll share five tips, but I will drill down on one. One that I want to share, if you're looking to enhance your employability skills, is you need to shore up your work experience. And you're wondering, work experience? But I'm still in school. How will I get any work experience? Does anyone here have work experience? I'm coming to you. Can you tell us what is your work experience? I help mommy in a company. I help mommy in a company, like in the financial aspect. I help mommy in a company, like in the financial aspect and also in the marketing area. with the financial as aspect of our mom's business and the marketing aspect too. Who else wants to share this side? Who has work experience that they would like to share? Um, I worked in a university cafeteria. I worked at a university cafeteria here, here on campus. I was um, attending to students, serving them food, yeah. Thank you. So we have someone who works in our mom's business, the financial and the marketing, and then we have another person who works in the school cafeteria. Now, what is important to get work experience before you get employed? It helps your mind be prepared for what you will see in the labor market. But when you're on break, it's good to rest because school can what you do you should look for internships that's one thing that would really help you look for internships and then if you can't even find internships what responsibilities do you assume while in school are you the course rep are you the I don't remember all these positions again it's been a while <laughs> are you the course rep are you the faculty rep what responsibilities? Are you the welfare officer of your student fellowship? It's important to begin to plug yourself into these things because it will help you develop the skills that you need to thrive in the world of work, right? So I'm coming back to the two people who heard, and I want to share the things you've gained from working with your mom and working at the school cafeteria. Working with my mom at the financial aspect, like I have to collect, gather the money that is paid to me for, by the customer. And at the end of the day, I make sure it is balanced. If it is not balanced, I can't, she won't accept everything I've done to her daddy. So I have to make sure it is balanced. And also with the person taking, doing, doing the stock. So my money has to be balanced in, that, in aspect with okay. the stock. That's how the money has. What kind of skill is she getting from that experience? Mike, thank you. She learns how to be accountable. Accountable? What else? What other skill can she learn from that experience? 
try, try. What other skill do you think she can learn from that experience? I'm coming to the last column. What other skill do you think she can learn from that experience? Someone here wants to try? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, she learns to be effective, actually, because if she can't balance the books, then definitely her mom will not be happy with her. So she has to be effective in what she's doing. Thank you. So she learns to be accountable. She learns to be effective. Another thing she would learn is attention to details. Attention to details. Oh, we sold this. We had 10 in the store as at yesterday morning. We have five now, which means we sold five. That's attention to details. So if we sold five, why are there only two left in the store when there should actually be five? So you see that even getting skills that would help you thrive in the world of work do not necessarily need to be from institutions. It doesn't have to be internships. Internships are good, but you can get it outside internships. Because I don't want anyone in this room listening to me thinking, oh, is a company that would accept me to intern before I can get work experience. No. She is getting work experience from her mom. Her mom. He is getting work experience from serving in the cafeteria. So that's the first thing that you need to do. You need to show up your work experience. The second thing that is important is have a presence on social media. How many of us are active on social media? And when I say active on social media, I don't just mean the Instagram. No, that's not, not oh, Yeah, it's good to have that, but that's not all. So how many of us are active on social media? I only saw some people at that end. How many of us are active on social media? Do we use phones? Okay, that probably explains. Okay. But during the break, because while I was in Covenant University too, we didn't use phones either. So I only had access to, for the four years I was there, I only had access to my phone while we were on holidays. And I think that helped me really because it showed that you can own something without that thing owning you. Because you wonder when you're at home on holidays, like you're always on your phone. But when you're in school, you survive without it. You survive without it. So when you're at home, the phone owns you. But when you're in school, you realize, I can own this phone without this phone owning me. So I think that's one good thing about Covenant that I really liked. The way you people screamed, no, it doesn't appear that you liked it. <laughs> it's really good because with the phones, there are a lot of distractions. There are times that I just switch off my phone because I don't want any distractions. I just want to focus. And phones are a lot of distraction. If it's not Instagram, is Snapchat, if it's not Snapchat, there are too many distractions. And I'm sure that's why the school said you shouldn't have a phone while you're here so you can focus. So I mean when it comes to having a presence on social media. How many of us are familiar with LinkedIn? A lot of us. LinkedIn, L-I-N-K-E-D-I-N. -E LinkedIn is a professional platform where people can share things that they are passionate about. I'm very active on LinkedIn, and there's this guy, um, em Emmanuel Unduka. Does anyone know him? Sorry? Do you want to share something with me? Okay. There's this guy, Emmanuel Unduka, on LinkedIn, and he just about himself, what he's passionate about, and it has really helped him. So I remember there was one time he posted on LinkedIn that he would love to be mentored by Tony Elumelu. And then people jumped on that post and people were asking, Satoni, please men mentor this guy. Satoni, please mentor this guy. And it's happened. So now he's called Tony Elumelu Boy. And then he has gotten internships. He, he just finished his internship with Netco. Netco is a subsidiary of NNPC. And also that was from being active on LinkedIn. Now he has gone, gotten to brand ambassadors that he's earning active on LinkedIn. You want your name to ring a bell when it is heard. So if Emmanuel walks into a company 
I'm not sure that there'll be many companies, if they are active on LinkedIn, that would say they have not heard of Emmanuel Unduka. So I want you, when you're at home, decide that I will open an account on LinkedIn. I will share what it is that I'm passionate about. If you're passionate about accounting, share about accounting. If you're pas passionate about personal development, share about yeah. Being active on LinkedIn has opened a number of doors for me. Um, I'm one of Tony Elumelu mentees as well because of social media. He just put out a post. He wants to mentor some old audacious women and he wants people to nominate. And people nominated me. That's how I got it. The coach award that I got, it was people who saw, who read what I post on social media and they thought, oh, this person is making a difference. And they nominated me. I don't even have a coaching certification yet, but I have a recognition as Coach of the Year 2021. So when you share on social media, that helps you to plant yourself in people's minds. And that also helps you develop yourself because you're asking, what content can I share with people today? It will make you to read. It will make you to be active. What, what, what happened to me today that I'd like to share? So it's important to have a social presence on social media. And then this is also very important. Um, I've worked with KPMG for more than 13 years. It will be 14 years in January. And of course, in the course of my work, I've done a number of interviews. I've been involved in recruiting, whether entry level. Entry level is people who just finished from university. I've also been involved in experienced hiring. And one thing I've found is that, especially at the entry level, they don't know how to tell their stories. So we are asking, was there any point where you had to um, get your views across to someone, the person disagreed with your view, how were you able to convince the person to accept your view? And we have people like, they are not able to articulate it. And I'm wondering, even while in school, don't you have that in class when, somebody, when you think that the um, suggestion should be A, and somebody says it's B, and then you're like, no, 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 I think it should be A because this, 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 this. Sometimes the person accepts, sometimes the person doesn't. Is there anyone who has not had any such experience? Not. Nobody. So why is it difficult to answer when it's time for interviews? must be able to tell your stories. You must be able to tell your stories. When you're go, um, entering the world of work after as entry level, there are usually two things that you will do. The first is the aptitude test, because you want to test your aptitude. And then the next is the interviews, because they want to get to know more about you. And in the interviews, they want to know, oh, does this person have problem solving skills? Does this person um, work as so questions as little as team. Some people are not able to answer. And I'm like, no. You have good projects in school, right? Exactly. So even though you're coming fresh from school, you should be able to answer questions around those kinds of things. So I have one assignment for you. There are more. But the first assignment I'm going to give you is interview questions. Google interview questions and begin to answer them. Because for some people, it might be nervousness. I'm hearing these questions for the first time. But by the time you Google them and you begin to answer them from now, then you know how to situate what it is that you do in school into those answers. Please don't be the one who gets to the interview. Please don't be the one who gets to the interview and is not able to tell your story. So you have to tell yourself because interviewers are not going to help you to do that. And then the next is to keep your CVs up to date. Some of you have attended training programs. Some of you have certifications. Why is all that not on your CV yet? The danger with waiting till, oh, when I'm ready to look for a job, I will update my CV. The danger with that is you will forget. So ensure your CV is up to date. I was going to give us five tips, and I'll drill in on the last one. Do we remember what the first four are? 
What's the first one? Yes, show up your work experience. Thank you. Second one. Thank you. Third one. Good. No, that's the fourth one. The third one is be able to tell your story. Then the fourth one is keep your CV up to date. And then the last one is sharpen your soft skills. I noticed that for most undergraduates, they are just focused on, I want to finish with a first class. I want to finish with a 2-1, which is great. Because there are, there are organizations that will not take people who have lower grades. Right? Where I work, I have to have a 2-1 or a first class to work there. So, by all means, strive to have a first class, strive to have a 2-1. But those are hard skills. Those are technical skills. Does anyone know what soft skills are? Soft skills. You want to try? You want to try? I like people who like to try. Excuse me. At least you should be able to know how to do something on your own. Like um, making of air. Um, um, you can repair things on your own. Or knowing how to sew clothes. Who else wants to try? What do you understand by soft skills? What you learn in school are the hard skills. So if you're a lawyer, that's hard skills. If you're an accountant, this is the accountant body that's accounting. That's hard skills. What are soft skills? I think, I think a soft skill is something you like or something you love and you try to learn more on it. Like if you're an accounting student in school but you love graphic design so you can educate yourself more on graphic design. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for sharing. So uh, in my slides, I wish they came up. So in my slides, I have, oh, it's locked. In my slides, I have the differences between hard skills and soft skills because I recognize that a lot of us are familiar with hard skills, but not soft skills, okay? So what are soft skills? Soft skills are more of personality attributes that will help you thrive at work when you add them to your hard skills, right? And then soft skills are, let me give some examples of soft skills. Creativity, how creative are you? These are things that are typically not taught in schools, but are important nevertheless. How willing are you to learn? How innovative are you? How persuasive are you? How creative are you? How much are you able to think outside the box? How are you able to work with other people? So these are things that are not necessarily technical, but to succeed at work, you need those things. Sorry, we're trying to see if we can still find alternatives. Okay. So, soft skills are those skills, like I said, that you would need to thrive, not just in the world of work, but in life generally. Now, imagine you have a doctor. This doctor is the best in Nigeria. Like, there's no sickness, no treats. Immediately you say, oh, these are my sy the symptoms, my head, my shoulder, my knees, my toes. The guy already knows, mm, is this, and it's correct. So his technical skills are on point. When it comes to his soft skills, 
when you when you get there, you're like, ah, oh, doctor, my shoulder. Uh, what do you expect that the doctor will do when he sees you in pain? What do you expect that a doctor will do when he sees you in pain? Sorry? Sympathize with you, empathize with you. But the doctor is the best. But this doctor is like, ah, ah, why are you shouting like this? More than your head and shoulder pain in you. But he's the best in Nigeria. So you how tools can make a mess of your heart if you're not um show up your soft skills this doctor is the best that's hard skills technical skills but he doesn't have empathy and so nobody wants to go to him that's the way it works if you want to be successful in the world of work you have got to work on your soft skills it's very important and in the next few slides i will be sharing with us some research that i did uh, because when i have opportunities to speak like this i try to do a lot of research I've done some research on why it's important to have soft skills. Okay, so um, LinkedIn released a 2019 Global Talent Trends report. And that report was essentially a survey of 5,000 professionals, 5,000 HR professionals in 35 countries. We know what HR is, right? HR is the people responsible for recruitment. Now, 91% of the 5,000 people, 91% agree that soft skills are very important to the future of recruiting and HR. 91%. What does that mean? That when they are looking for who to hire, they are going to be placing more emphasis on soft skills. Another, still in the same LinkedIn 2019 Global Report, they said, 92% of the 5,000 talent professionals surveyed say soft skills matter as much as or more than hard skills. Did you hear that? 92% of the talent professionals said, if I were to choose, I think hard skills and soft skills place them on the same pedestal. And some said, ah, no, if I had to choose between hard and soft, I will choose soft. And why is that? Because it's easier to train somebody to learn hard skills. Oh, this person needs to learn this. I sent the person for a certification course. By the time he comes back from that course, he's able to um, reconcile the bank statements. Oh, this person needs help with this. I sent the person for a course. But soft skills are not as easy to train people on. So companies are saying, if I have to choose between somebody with good hard skills, and terrible soft skills, somebody with okay hard skills and very good soft skills, I will choose this person. So what does that tell you? That soft skills are becoming very important to the future of work. And in the next few slides, I will share with us the soft skills that the future of work requires. Okay? And then 89% of the 5,000 talent professionals also said when they hire somebody and the process doesn't work out, so the person is already employed, but they have to let the person go, it's because the person lacks, lacks soft skills. It's because the person lacks soft skills. So you now see, I hope something is lighting up on your inside to let you know, oh yes, I should focus on my hard skills because I want to graduate with a good result, but I should also focus on my soft skills as well. Okay, so I have another report. This is a December 2020 Harris Poll survey where they surveyed 1,001 hiring decision makers in the U.S. And they said, I'll just read it verbatim, if hiring for a job and the perfect candidate did not exist, 75% of them would most likely hire a job candidate who has soft skills, even though he doesn't have the right experience and qualifications. Back in those days, it was, what's your hard skills? The future of work, even the now of work is, what soft skills do you have to complement your hard skills? And then another still on the Harris Poll survey, the, um, the people who were 
polled also said if no perfect candidate existed, rather than choose someone with direct experience or qualifications and poor personal skills, they would choose someone who is enthusiastic. That's a soft skill, so you can write that down. They would choose someone who is enthusiastic, someone who is willing to learn, someone who has excellent communication skills, excellent time management skills, and someone who is dependable. Those are five soft skills right there. So I want you to begin to ask yourself, how enthusiastic am I? When somebody brings an idea to you, are you immediately thinking, oh, how can we make this work? Or are you the one who thinks, well, could it work? Let's move on. Are you dependable? Can your colleagues depend on you? Oh, if Abigail has said that she will do this, I'm sure she will get it done. You can go to bed. Is that true? Are you willing to learn? Or must it be, no, this is not the only way I know how to do it, so it must be this way. That's not a willingness to learn. And these are skills that the world of work requires. Okay? And then 59% say finding applicants for open positions is one of their greatest difficulties. And 33% said it's difficult because applicants lack soft skills. So I'm looking for people to fill a position. I have CVs, but it's difficult for me to select because the people that I'm finding don't have the right soft skills. And then another, another um, report, this was from Susan Collins' presentation at the 2020 SHRM Talent Conference. 97% of employers surveyed said that soft skills were either as important or more important than hard skills. You know, this is like almost the same as the first one I initially gave from the LinkedIn report. So this is now 97% of people saying soft skills are as important as hard skills though. And some are saying, I think that soft skills are even now more important than hard skills. And then they said 46% of new employees fail within 18 months. And of this 46%, 89% fail because they lack soft skills. So they don't fail because they don't know the work. No. They fail because they lack soft skills. And I'll give you an example, a personal example that I'm aware of. Not somebody told me, some, one that I experienced. There was someone who was really good. Like you could give her work and go to bed knowing that it will be done. Sometimes if you don't even have time to review, you can pass it up to your superior because you know that this girl's work is always tight. She was that good. Her ratings were over the sky, consistently over the sky. She was above average, walking on waters. But there was an issue. She couldn't work well with junior team members. So you would go to the restroom, for example, you want to ease yourself, and you see somebody there crying. Why are you crying? This person. Or you will go to the staircase, Instead of using the elevator, you'll see a junior team member crying. Why are you crying? This person. And the organization really wanted to retain her. So they tried sending her on anger management courses. They tried sending her on different soft skills training programs because they really wanted to retain her. This was one of their best. But after a while, they had to let her go. They had to let her go, even though she was one of the best. Because soft skills are important. No company wants team members to always be crying. Because those people will go and share it with their friends, share it with their families. Ah, this place, hey, it's just wicked, wicked people that are there. And that's not a representation of the organization. So even though it was a hard decision for the organization to make, they had to let her go. I'm sharing that example so that you know that the world of work that you are joining also requires you to have good, soft skills in addition to your hard skills. So you're probably wondering, what soft skills do they want exactly? So that I even know where to focus. Do they give us areas of focus during exams? Do they give us areas of concentration? Yes. Do you get areas of concentration during exams? Uh -uh. Some are saying yes, some are saying no. <laughs> OK. So I want to give you areas of concentration. 
based on what employers have said over different years. In 2019, based on the 2019 Global Talent Trends Report by LinkedIn, they said that soft skills that companies need but have a hard time finding. That means the demand for these soft skills is huge, but they don't find a lot of people that have those soft skills. The first is creativity. Creativity. How able are you to think about creative ways to solve a problem? Oh, the faculty has this problem. Or oh, the accounting department has this problem. Are you able to think about creative ways of solving the problems? Even if it's not a problem. If you find that we've been doing since I joined Ankor University, can you think of a more creative way to do it? Because something does not necessarily need to be outrightly bad before you're able to do something about it creatively. So how creative are you? Or is it, oh, once they do it like this, it's fine. Another one is persuasion. How able are you to persuade people to see things how you're seeing them? The third one is collaboration. How able are you to work with people? Some people want to work alone. That won't work in the world of work because you have to get results together. The fourth one is adaptability. How flexible are you? If somebody brings a new idea, how flexible are you to even think about it? The next one is time management. Are you able to manage time properly? Because time is a scarce resource. And then um, with the Harris poll results, there were three top soft skills. The first was willingness to learn. So that's number six. Willingness to learn. The next is dependability. How dependable are you? How reliable are you? The next is communication skills. How able are you to communicate? And I know some people think, oh, communication is once I talk, that's communication. No. Communication is only effective when the person you're speaking to gets your intended message. So the person must understand what exactly you try to say. And then the last, okay, then I have three more based on the Monsters 2022 Future of Work Global Report. The first one was teamwork slash collaboration, which we have already mentioned. The second was communication, which we have already mentioned. And then the third is problem solving slash critical thinking. Okay, so in concluding, there are three things that I need you to take out of this session, right? The first is that the world of work has changed and your technical skills are no longer enough. You have to combat them with soft skills. And then I now need you with that understanding to conduct an objective soft skills assessment. Now, I already said I was going to share this presentation with Dr. Erin. So I have listed some websites where you can go to, and they will ask you some questions. Respond to those questions objectively. Based on your responses to the questions, they will come up with a report that says, this is how well you do on teamwork. So they will score you on teamwork. They will score you on innovation. They will score you on different soft skills so you can see your scores. And one of those links will give you a guide on how to improve those soft skills. So if it's covered innovation, for example, it would send you a guide. This is how to improve your innovation soft skills. So that is in the slides, and you will get from Dr. Erin. Another thing I want you to note is that it is your responsibility to close those gaps. I don't want anyone here waiting, oh, Ankor University is going to do it for me. It's your responsibility to do it yourself. It is your, this is your life, so it is your responsibility. Ankor University will help you because it will provide the opportunities for you to show those to work as a team. Then you have the opportunity to showcase your creativity skills, your persuasion skills, your collaboration skills, your teamwork skills, many things. It's just that when you're doing those, those activities, you don't realize that this is an opportunity to actually showcase my soft skills. But now you'll have a change of mindset. And for every time you have those activities, you remember, what soft skills can I showcase with this activity? So, Ankor University is providing you the platform, but you must deliberately showcase those, those soft skills. And then in closing, 
I want you to look for opportunities to develop or hone these skills. Look for opportunities. Look for opportunities. If you need to volunteer, volunteer. If it's classwork, do the classwork. But ensure that you look for every single opportunity to hone these skills. Because like I said, Anchor University will provide you the opportunities every day, but it's your responsibility to hone them. I also have some links that you can read up on soft skills. Okay, so that's all I have for today. But I want three people. Thank you. But I want three people, one from here, one from here, one from here. Okay, here also includes there. So tell me one minute this session. I said I'm done with the presentation, but I want three people to tell me one thing. One thing. So one, one from there. Who wants to share? Okay. Very much, Ma, for the wonderful session. I really learned a lot. Okay, so before you even started about um, certifications and um, updating your CV, I was just going through some of the trainings I had done recently, and I was thinking of, should I add this to my CV or not? Is it, is it very, very important? And when you spoke about it, I was like, wow, that's a sign. I need to add it to my CV. So I learned that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Add it to your CV. Um, this side, who's sharing? Someone who hasn't spoken before. Have you spoken? Have you spoken before? So, um, so what I learned today was, um, as much as hard skills are Sorry, important. Can we hear her? As much as hard skills are important and necessary, we also need to like, have soft skills so, uh, so that to have, an, to have an edge in the competitive market because the market now is demanding. So having hard skills alone, technical skills, is not enough. So to, to actually like, be competitive, you have to have soft skills and everything. Now, let me just add a little to what she said. I don't know if you guys remember, um, um, is it MS Lotus Programming Language, MS DOS? Okay, you guys may not know because it was a long time ago. You remember MS DOS, and that time that was the reigning thing. If you don't know MS DOS, what are you even living for? <laughs> but now you guys in this room don't even know what MS DOS is. Hard skills, some hard skills will become extinct. Especially now that we have artificial intelligence. And the world is saying that robots are going to be doing a lot of things. Hard skills will fast become extinct. But your soft skills will be extinct. Your creativity can never be extinct. Never be extinct. Dependability will never be extinct. Soft skills can never be extinct. But some hard skills can be extinct. Okay? So, who wants to share here? Thank you. Um, thank you very much for your presentation today. Actually, up until today, I always thought that unless you worked in an organization, you don't have working experience. But now I've learned that our daily lives and the things that we experience here and there can actually serve to help us to develop and hone our soft skills, just like you said. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. You are such an amazing audience, and I'm honored to even just be here. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Ma. Please, if anybody has any question, can you please come forward? Fill in the seats in front. Questions, please. Try. All right, there's one person here. I think she's coming. Can you? Good morning. 
morning, sir. I appreciate the speaker for a job well done. Thank you, sir. I'm a lecturer in the Department of Business Administration. My name is Annie Fouchi. I want to ask this question to assist the student. What you have given us is comparability between hard skill and soft skill, and then the importance of soft skill over hard skill. But there's the third dimension that is involving in management circle now, which is referred to as spirituality or transparency management. And that is the problem that we are having in the nation that an accountant will see 80 billion, 240 billion, and then, and then the uh, icon will now say, we don't know this man, this and that. Which means that spirituality and uh, uh, transparency is lacking in this particular profession. And that is what the VC really spoke upon. Madam, please, can you get more on this spirituality and transparency in employability? Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, um, I would have covered that on reliability. Actually, letting your actions and your thoughts and your words align. Now, we have situations, like we said, where um, accountants work with other people to cook the books. And that's not a place where you want to be. That's not a place where you want to be. I know that Ankor University is a faith-based university, and you know that a good name is better than riches. You know that. That was one thing my father said to us when we were growing up. I'm 37 years old now, but I remember those words like he just said them to me this morning. He always said to me, a good name is better than And then he also said, remember the daughter of whom you are. So whenever I interpret, remember the daughter of whom you are, I remember is I am my father's daughter and I am God's daughter. And I know that in this part of the world, sometimes people are able to get terrible things. I believe that a new Nigerian integrity will be the order of the day. And those who are unable to fit in to that we did away. So as you I want you to go with a personal determination those who lack integrity. You have to make. My father many times lose contracts because he was not willing to go. It was a decision he had to make. Other contractors like him were doing it and they were fine with it, but it was a decision he had to make. You should decide and know the story of Joseph. How will I do this thing and sin against God? Everyone, I expect that everyone a relationship with God where it is important to them that God is happy with what it is that they do. And then even for you as an individual, there was one in school, only one reason. He's saying, I helped him to pass. It's pride. I don't want anybody saying, oh, if not because of me, Adem Meme would have failed this course. So I want you to have a personal determination. No matter what happens, no matter what life throws at me, I will never... No matter what life throws at me, I will never do A, B, C. And the A, B, C will vary depending on what that you're working on, but it's important. Always tell yourself, whenever my name is mentioned, I don't want it to be that it's a blot on my white. No. I don't want it to be that it's a stain on my white. No, I don't want it to be that. And then you also remember that your children are watching you. And children don't do, you don't have children now, but you will have children soon. And what is, is what you will continue to do when you have children. You don't get a new operating system when you have children. Your behavior will continue. And so anything that you don't want your children to see or to do, now is the time to stop doing those things. Okay. I have next question from. Um, good morning, ma'am. My question. Thank you. 
My question was, uh, um, you talked, the last thing you said about, about volunteering, um, so that there are opportunities that we can volunteer for. So if it's to ask, what, as a fine, like, as an accounting student, what opportunities, like, is open for us, for us to volunteer for, to help improve our skills? Um, I want to talk in two parts. So I also read accounting. Accounting was born. <laughs> School that into practice. So if we have people like that who are reading accounting, and I could understand why, because I said accounting is a skill that every organization, every industry will need. Whether it's a hospital, they need accountants. Whether it's a company, company, they need accountants. So you will never do this. And so I read accounting. I actually wanted to read literature because I write really well. So there might be people in this room who read accounting because that's what my parents wanted me to read. And there might also be people in this room who are passionate because I have colleagues who are passionate about accounting, who love it. So I recognize that there, there might be both batches in this room. And so my answer will speak to both batches. Now to those of us who are passionate about accounting, um, in school, in Nwasa, this is yeah, join the NUASA. If you're in school, you should also be looking to have tutorials, anchor tutorials, for those who don't understand. Because what happens when you do tutorials is you are repeating to yourself what it is that you already know, so it will help it stick. You are volunteering to help people who don't understand, understand it better. And then you might have people who run businesses of their own during the holidays it might even be your place of worship during the holidays you might say oh i want to attach myself to the treasurer and so after service you might have to wait a little or i want to then you count together if they have books if they do the audited accountants audited accounts you can work with them on that if you have someone who runs a business it doesn't have to be a huge dangote sized business it can even be a little so just think who do I know? Is it my mom? Is it my dad? Is it my uncle that runs a business? When I'm on holidays, I can say, okay, twice a week, I will help your accounting. Or in church, I will help your team. So it's just, what skill do you want to build? If it's the technical skills, then you can look at sharing to join people's accounting departments, organizations, and also team. the more you're able to learn. Now, if you are the group who is not passionate about accounting, one thing you can consider is what am I passionate about? So like I told you, I wasn't um, passionate about accounting. So one thing I used to do when I used to write a lot for um, Guardian. So I used to write from Guardian as far as 2003, 2000 when I was in school because I wanted to continue to hone the skills. So it's to ask yourself, what am I passionate about? Which category are you in? Which category are you in? Are you passionate about not passionate about accounting? Passionate about business. Okay. So when you say business, is it starting a business or helping people to grow their businesses? Helping people to grow their businesses. So looking at what skills do I need to help people to grow their businesses? Because helping people to grow their businesses, some people think, oh, to help people grow their business, you just have, have marketing alone is not enough. But if you're marketing and people don't know you, then nobody's going to buy. So you should also think about branding. How do I help them brand so that they can stand and anybody that hears their name knows, oh, I know this name. Do you know how most of us want to buy bleach? And you go and say, I want to buy hypo. Has anybody heard? Or you want to buy detergent, and instead of saying, I want to buy detergent, you say, I want to buy Oho. I want to buy Ariel. They branded themselves. Exactly. Instead of, I want to buy seasoning cubes, you say, I want to buy Maggi. This is branding. And so you might want to ask yourself, which one do I want to focus on? Is it to help them market? So to help them um, leverage more channels to get their goods and services out? Or do I want to such that they, their names resound in people's ears when they hear them. So you want to see, which one do I want to do? And then you might want to look for organizations that need those skills, interns, 
People will need interns, and then intern, intern with them. And you can also start with those around you. There might be people in school that run businesses. And then you ask, oh, how can I help you? I want to hold my marketing skills. I want to hold my branding skills. And I want to start with them. So that by the time you, what, what level are you now? 100. So that in the next three years, you will see how far you go. You see how far you go. So it's dream big, but start little. Dream big, but start little. Have I answered your question? Hello. So my name is Adiela Emile. And my question is, before my question, I really want to thank you because you actually shed more light that tech skills are skills that will help us get jobs, but we need soft skills to actually retain those jobs. Thank you so much for that. You're welcome. So my question is, you know, I know that technology has really been on the rise and I also know that technology cannot completely eradicate the impact of humans, but can definitely reduce our, our um, empl employability, so which will increase the level of unemployment, especially in Nigeria and all of that. So my question now is that, what are the tech skills you use on a day-to-day -day activities that makes you different from the rest? And which other tech skills can we learn right now that we're in school that will really help us to scale very high in a competitive environment? Thank you. That's a good question. Uh, in Nigeria, they get where machines completely override the need for humans. I think we still have a long way to go in that regard. But in terms of, I focus on, oh, tech, tech is the way to go. But I think it's maybe to and whatever the skills are can have a handshake. No, unless it's, I don't have a place in the future, no. There will always be a need for stuff. Okay, so what can I to my accounting. What can I add to my accounting? And those would be, like you said, techno technology skills, power, how good are you with Microsoft Excel? If we will start with Microsoft Excel. So that a number of don't know. You can, no, you can see it. Oh, it's fine. You. You're welcome. Look at Power BI, look at Microsoft Excel, look at all the Microsoft tools. Because even with LinkedIn skills assessment, some of the things that they reach you on are Microsoft Office, how versatile are you with it? PowerPoint, how versatile are you with it? So start with the Microsoft Office tools, then go to Power BI, and any other one that you think you need if you want to remain an accountant. If you want to move out from accounting, then you can talk about all those um, product management, Java 3, programming, and all of that. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, good afternoon. Uh, my question is that you are talking about soft skills, and you give an example about a woman that was having anger issues. So when they sent her for management, and um, you said you didn't define soft skills. You said they are personality traits. So are these like are soft skills only based on your personality or they can be developed if you go through training? That's my question. Thank, Thank you. you. That's a beautiful question. Thank you. People, they have, their soft skills are more pronounced than others. So for example, I have colleagues who think, ah, this energy is too much. And I've got the 8 o'clock meetings and I'm coming with so much energy and they're like, please, don't stress us with this, your energy. But that's my personality. They are a lot more reserved, like, don't stress me. When I want to do this thing, I will do it. So that's a personality trait. But soft skills can be developed. One of the things, one of the soft skills that are necessary for the world of work is assertiveness. And I had an issue with being assertive. So I thought, if I try to put my point across, no, 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 I will not be spoken to. I thought that would qualify as rude. But then I realized that I can't this assertiveness. So I started from my friends. If anyone said anything to me that I didn't like, I would tell them that I didn't like it. And then after a while, it became 
I started getting used to it. And then I took it to work too. If anyone says something I didn't think, maybe when the person has calmed down, okay, I felt disrespected by what you said. Da, da, da. So soft skills can be developed with time management for example oh it takes me five hours to get ready you can tell yourself or oh, spend three hours on my phone and then i'm not even able to do my assignments you can tell yourself today i'm only going to spend one hour on my phone there are apps that time you spend on your phone so you can tell yourself from today i will begin to cultivate this thing all these skills is usually not something that we are born with but you can tell yourself when i see a problem Instead of waiting for other people to think of the solution, I will think of the solution. And so you start doing it from your class, from the house, and then after a while it becomes second nature, such that when you go to work, when you resume at work, it's already something that you're used to doing. So you're seeing problems and solving it because you took time to develop that skill. So yes, soft skills can be learned, please. It can be developed. Thank you. Um, Grasson. Thank you for the presentation, Ma. Thank you. Um, my question is actually more practical because um, currently I'm a final level student. Um, I'll be graduating soon. Um, currently, I had this problem with uh, writing my CV. You know, Nigeria has this problem of unemployment. And it's not that there's no job, but uh, the jobs are so few. There are thousands of applicants. So how do I make my CV brief in the same way appealing and more um, understandable? You know, how do I make it something that, okay, someone will read and be like, okay, yes, this is someone I want. You know, while us, um, the person is also viewing thousands of CVs, how do I make mine stand out? Yeah, mm -hmm. that was my question. Thank you very that much. That's a great question. Yeah. Thank you. One mistake that I see people do is use one CV for all applications. What I able to do is for every... Um, for every... Um, vacancy that people are trying to fill, they already have the skills that they are looking for. And so if you read through the job description, they'll tell you about the organization, they'll tell you about the role, and then they'll tell you about the skills that they need on the role. Now, gonna is where it was human beings review the CVs one by one. And what organizations do is they use um, systems and the systems are configured in such a way that they look for the same skills that were on the job description. So the first step is to ensure that your CV has those skills that are on their job description. You might not have all, and I don't want anyone putting skills that they don't have. Because you really need they will test you. And you don't want to be looking like a fraud at that point. So read through the job description, see the skills that they are looking for, and look for how you can make your experience match those skills. So if someone says, oh, we're looking for people who exhibit leadership skills, then that's when you want to talk about how you led your team. That's when you want to talk about how you led as the class rep, how you led as the head of the welfare group. All the leadership experiences that you have would go there to complement your saying that you have leadership skills. So look in the job description, see the skills that they are looking for. Because they would only, the ones that will be reviewed by humans are the ones that the system says, I saw this skill, I saw this skill, I saw this skill. So make sure the skills there are in your own CV. And then when you get a leg in the room for the interview, be able to sell yourself, tell your story. Let them know why you are the man for the job. I don't have work experience, but while I was in school, I did this, 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 this. I identified this problem and I solved them. I was able to work with a team. I was able to think outside the box in respect of this problem. So you must be able to sell yourself. Thank you very much. You have different CVs for different roles because what each one would need would be different. Thank you, ma'am. Can we please put our hands together for how much we do? Thank you very, very much. Question. Okay. Because of time, we may not. Please, we are we are running out of time. Eh? 
you can see after after the program. Please can we give her a round of applause, please? Thank you very much, Mrs. Edenome, for coming uh, to give all this presentation. Thank you so much. God bless you. All right. Uh, before you can, no, you are still here. Please, we have a um, photograph with the guest speaker now. I would have wanted us to go out, but we can have the, we can have it here. So what we are going to do is, we are going to do it, um, I think, level by level, but under the Antonio level, can you just step out to have the photograph with the guest speaker? Hundred and two hundred level students. Please let's be snappy about that, please. Please hundred and two hundred level, can you step out? Hundred and two hundred level. We can climb the podium, please. Let's be snappy, three and four level students. Please, let's be fast about it. Three and four level students.
Thank you very much. Please, can we have our refreshment, please? the panel discussion but before that can we have miss ebonk favor and miss adebi oluwa to your seat to read their citations miss miss sarah Henry is an extremely self-motivated investment expert with over 15 years financial experience in a multinational organization Chevron Nigeria Limited. She's a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria and, and Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria. Ms. Sarah Henry is an astute of financial expert with a broad and comprehensive knowledge of the global financial marketplace and sound business as human. This has helped in searching out new opportunities that ultimately grows the portfolio under our preview. In, 2020, in 2021, she founded HIR Initiative, an NGO investment based organization in Lagos. Additionally, Ms. Sarah Henry is a passionate mentor with the ability to inspire and motivate teenagers and young couples to achieve and expect the best possible results from all, sp all spheres of life, including of training, of training on sound financial planning and discipline. She's a great motivational speaker who over the years has facilitated several workshops, seminars, roundtable discussions within and outside our organization. Our passion lies in grooming the young generation for fulfilling tomorrow, and this has been fed into our retirement plan, which is in the work already. She's a United Nations and African Union Special Joint SDG Humanitarian Ambassador for Societal Development, an international airport professional, a pioneer Nigerian female trained and accredited by the Global International Civil Aviation Organization and the Airport Council International. She's also, accredited, she's also an accredited management trainer and attended the Airport Executive Leadership Program of Concordia University John Molson Business School, Montreal, Canada. She possesses a Doctor of Science in Education degree of Cornerstone University and Theological Seminary of Jerusalem, Israel, and USA. Masters in Business Administration, Masters in Agribusiness, Postgraduate Diploma in Public Administration, Higher National Diploma in Hotel Management. She possesses Diploma Certificate in Hair Transport Planning, Operations and Management, NCA Tizaria. Advanced Diploma in Aviation Safety of Airport Council International Canada. 
and attended numerous professional courses, symposiums, conferences, as well as workshops, both locally and internationally. She's a certified member of International Civil Aviation Organization, New Generation of Aviation Professionals, member of African Environmental Committee, member of Nigerian Institute of Management. She's also a chartered member of Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport member, International Aviation of Women's Association, Montreal, Canada, member of Women in Aviation International, Ohio, USA. She's a recipient of the status of fellow American Institute of Education and Training, USA. Society, a fellow of Society of Educational Administrators of Nigeria, a fellow of Nigerian Biological Safety Association, a fellow of Nigerian Institute of Training and Development, a fellow of Institute of Disaster Management and Safety Sciences. She was involved in the technical innovation tours of Metropolitan Nashville Airport Authority, 2013. She was also involved in the Airports Company of South Africa, Durban Airports, October 2014. She was also involved in the Technical Innovation Tours of Munich International Airport, Germany, November 2015. She was the former Assistant General Manager and Head of Airport Operations Training, Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, and currently a board member, Peace Advocate of Nigeria. She's an aviation training consultant a CEO, Vidan Agricultural Academy Limited. I present you Dr. Ambassador Mayanga Vivian Zainab. She's married to engineer Daniel Mayanga and the marriage is blessed with three sons. Dr. Titus Udom is a well-rounded financial professional with over 22 years experience in the upstream oil and gas industry. He combines sound academic knowledge in accounting, economics, and strategic management with practical industry experience. He joined the Shell Petroleum Development Company in 1997. He has held senior position in the project management, risk management, assurance, financial control, business planning, management information, joint venture, and the statutory reporting, treasury, and contract management. He is currently the principal, principal consultant of the Soterao Consulting, a management and financial service consulting firm in Lagos, Nigeria. Dr. Titus holds a BSc accounting, master's, and doctorate degree in economics from the University of Port Harcourt. He has he also obtained a master's degree in strategic business management from Manchester Metropolitan University and an MBA from Imperial College, London. He is a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, an associate member of the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants, United Kingdom. He is a facilitator for ICAD man Mandatory Continuous Professional Education Program and a conference speaker which with published academy articles in the local and international journals. He is a life coach, a youth, a youth mentor. In 2018, he founded the Anchor Youth Initiative, a non-for-profit organization dedicated to the provision of quality education for rural children. He is the founder and executive director of the Innovation Academy and Education Service Limited, a social enterprise dedicated to the development of young business leaders, especially in the area of entrepreneurship, ICT, soft skills required in the emerging marketplace. Thank you. Thank you very much for this good citation. Um, because of our time, please, each of the panelists initially will give you 10 minutes to talk. After each of the panelists, we still have, we are still going to have um, um, discussion, panel discussion. So, because most of those questions, most of the panel discussion, we are going to take question and answer. So, let's cut short the the your presentation time to like uh, seven minutes, please, per speaker. So, who is the first uh, presenter? I call on Mrs. Sarah. In, Uh, 
Hello. Okay, so I count it a great privilege to be here in Ankara University, and I want to appreciate um, the management of the school for this great privilege. Okay, all of, so I know that this afternoon we will be talking about managing career in a digital world. Whether we like it or not, that's the reality we are faced with. And the earlier we come to speed with that reality, the better for us. Okay, so as I start out, I'll give us a scenario that would send the message home. But, and that scenario is the um, COVID-19 scenario that we just witnessed. Several organizations were not prepared for such scenario. And so when that event happened and everyone was shut out for several months, you know, some organizations could not carry on with their normal business activities. However, I had, um, okay, so our kids attend two different schools. I discovered that there was a difference between the two different schools. So one was actually prepared and ahead of the curve when it comes to um, going digital and technology-wise. Okay, and so when there was the need to switch to virtual learning, it was, a, it was an easy one, it was a seamless one. I was actually following the classes because coincidentally, we were also working from home. And okay, so I saw things move seamlessly and without stress. And on the other hand, a bigger school, I felt disappointed. And you know, my experience was that for several days, my kids were not able to attend to classes. And you know, the message that sent to me was the need to be ahead of the curve if you are going to thrive in the business plane. Reality has dawned on us. Now for over two years, personally, I've been working from home. And you know, the fact that it has become a successful venture, working off a physical office premise, you know, then further sends that message down that we need to go as techy as we can, irrespective of what discipline we claim to be in. Okay, and as accountant, I'm proudly won and happy to be. I was in GSS3 when I discovered my passion. And interestingly, in my house of the six children, I was the only one towing the commercial routes. Every other person were in the sciences um, environment. And for me, I was very passionate about it. And so that's why I tell you I'm proudly one. Now, the reality is turning very fast on us. And I'll give us scenarios. You know, in my organization, initially those days, we do several things manually, paper, paperwork. You want to um, sign a letter. You work on it, on your system, assuming you are techie, and you still go print it out and get physical signature. But we went beyond that during the COVID-19 era, and what did we do? You know, now you're able to get your signature appended to documents online, and you're able to send. What that implied was lower cost for the organization. Now my question is, would organizations be willing to incur more cost under the guise that their employees are not techie. Would they be willing? No. And in the past couple of years, I'm happy Mrs. Edememe is here, you know, the companies are actually looking out for opportunities to cut down on human cost, personnel cost, because that's a major one for the organizations. And how will they do that if they do not embrace technology? And so, the reality is, if you say you're an accountant and you can draw the T-ledger and you can post all of the accounting entries and you have not woken up to the reality that you need to sharpen your, technical skill, your technological skills, sorry, digital skills, then you are just behind the curve. Another thing to mention, you know, I just ran and I'll run quickly through that. You know, I stumbled over a, a writer by the four business council, and it pointed out 14 critical skills that organizations expect in this digital world. I won't through them because of time, very quickly. Number one, 
collaborating and self-managing employee. That's what they are looking out for. So if you are going to be sellable, we all have heard severally today that the market is becoming not just competitive, highly competitive. So if we are going to be sellable, then we must be able to manage ourselves. And I'll give you a very quick example. You wouldn't say that you had too much of work in so much that you missed out on a critical email that was sent to you. Imagine the MD of your company had sent you an email that needed to be dealt immediately. And you're nowhere to be found, not because you are not at work, not because you took a day off, but because you missed out on that mail. So what, um, what companies are looking out for are employees that can use digital tools to manage themselves. So today we have the Google Calendar. We have other form of online calendars that you can use to schedule. You know, I used to have a boss that I, I wonder how she knows the birthday date of everyone working on that. Uh, you know, it took me time. Eventually, I was able to unravel that. I got to her calendar, and I saw that every damn thing, even a visit to the clinic, was on the calendar. Amazing. And so if you say you don't know how to do that, you are privileged to have this session prior to getting into the labor market. And so what do you want to do? You actually want to ensure that you start learning on those things. You can actually use them to schedule your personal activities now. You know, you're trying to bring yourself up to speed. Now, before I go to the next, I'll also give you an example. So um, after my senior secondary school, I was sharing with Dr. Titus this morning, my father was very, very strict on the fact that you were not going to work face your academics. I didn't like that. And so one month, I went to typewriting school. That's several years ago. So typewriter was the intent then. Now, years down the line, I had to, I got into my organization. I needed to work. Let me also add that during service year, I told myself, yes, I'm posted to Gombe State, interestingly so, and to a school. So I had all of the time. What can I do to add value to myself? So I told myself, I will not leave this service here the way I came. I must add value to myself. And so I went to computer school, which is one of the values I added to myself during service here. And so I got to my organization. That was the first um, structured organization because prior to that time, I worked as a teacher. Okay, so I needed to be up to speed. There was nobody to add. In short, in organizations today, you at times you have to wallow through deep seas. To, to learn on the job. And so there was nobody to unhold. I needed to show forth or bring forth the skills I'd acquired over time. So when she said, um, on your work experience, I understood that very quickly. As much as for those of us that are giving um, assignments, whether in the NUASA, in the department, or whatsoever, and you shy away from it, you're not doing any work, you're doing yourself. As um, much of those opportunities that you embrace and you make use of you know it sharpens your skills the more and so next to that is okay so let me finish that story i got into the um into chevron and i needed to come up to speed and i was presented with a system during my all through my university days i never had opportunity to press computer but the fact that i chose to add value to myself made a whole lot of difference at some point my superiors then would say, you type like you have magic fingers. Just one month in typing school, it made a whole lot of difference. So no knowledge is a waste. Another thing here is employees who can build digital toolbox. We have several digital applications and initiatives all around us. So you must have them, and you must know which is meant for what. The reality is, gone are those days when you will be writing on paper Excel, an a very, very intelligent application. But then you are able to um, be, you are able to be dexterous in the use of it by using it the more. So if today you know Excel, please, on that scale. Another thing is employees with the team spirit. The belief is that working from different angles of the world during the COVID-19 era, we are still partly in there, was going to be difficult managing team spirit. But alas, the story was different. And what was the story? You could get online and say, hello, Tolu. Hi, Shola. You know, and you could relate as though you, you, you're seeing yourself. You know, what that tells us is with the advantages of team spirit, 
higher productivity, higher morale, and you know, great um, outcome when it comes to work, then you are able to also still you know, make ensure that team spirit is, up, um, is available despite the fact that you are online. Another thing is you must be able to manage your email inbox. I had mentioned that earlier. Thank you. Okay, so you must also be willing to interact with the digital world. Some of us shy away from it. I did that a couple of months um, pre-COVID. When they say anything, take it, take it. I just feel like, you know what, I'm an accountant. I'm not a computer, what, what, what. But the reality was, last month, I built a bot that can replicate what an accountant does. Imagine. And so it was just a training of three days, and we had just two days more to build the board, and we have it running in production. So what that tells us is you must be open-minded if you want to be able to thrive in the digital world. Another thing is learn beyond WhatsApp. Beyond WhatsApp. How are you? You need to learn to use communication platform. We have so many of us use the Zoom platform, but we don't even know the possibilities, the additional functionalities we can use. You don't know you can actually have a board that interacts with your audience while communicating. We also need the complex problem solving skill. You don't, if you're going to get to the top and the peak of your career, you must embrace problem. You don't shy away from challenges. You face it, you cross that or do, you become better than you were before you encounter the problem. Then you must also embrace digital dexterity. That is, at every point in time, you must make effort to ensure that you're better digitally than what you were before then. Continuous learning, mastering the basics, adapting and learning quickly. If you are not open-minded, if you say, that, is how, that wasn't how we were taught in school, then you might actually be left behind. Then you must also ensure you can navigate user interfaces. Let me tell you something. If I come here today and someone in 100 level teaches me something, and I go out there to my office, for example, and I exhibit that skill I picked from that learning, will anybody know that someone in 100 level taught me? No except I say it. So what that tells us is we must be willing to learn at any opportunity. You should also be willing to reference information. Now, anything you are looking for is on Mr. Google. So anything whatsoever you're looking for. So let's always endeavor to make use of that. Thank you. Welcome, Ambassador, Ambassador Dr. Vivian Menyaga. morning. I am so happy and so delighted to be here this morning. When I see all of you, I remember when I was your age and uh, when I was in school like you. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a wonderful thing and uh, you guys are so privileged. Some of the training, some of the things you are hearing today, just like my sister there said, we did not have the privilege to go through or to receive all that. May all glory be to Almighty God. Um, I don't know if I should wait for them to project what I want to talk about, but it is centered on the theme of today. I stand on the existing protocol. I want to appreciate the management of Anchor University for giving me the opportunity to stand here this morning to share my knowledge and experience with the young upcoming ones to enable them to be well prepared as they head to the labor market after graduation from here. Um, managing career opportunities in the digital world. When we say career, that should be the next thing that you guys are going to after leaving Anchor University. If I may quickly ask this, when I say career, 
Can any of you answer me, what is a career? When I say career, what do you understand by career? Who can answer that quickly? Or maybe I should not dwell asking questions maybe because how many minutes do I have, please? The moderator. Oh, seven minutes. Then I don't have to dwell on that. <laughs> okay, anyway, simply put, career means a person's occupation in life, one's profession or calling as a means of livelihood. After your university, after your schooling, you go out there, you need a job. And as you enter there, that is your career. According to your training, according to your profession, now you are uh, in accountancy, finance, you are going to focus along that line. And at the end of the day, to be able to earn an income, to sustain yourself, to sustain your family. I don't know if I'm making a sense, but I think that's the way it is. It is um, your, your profession that you are trained to undertake in life. That is what career stands for. And when we talk about career now, we want to link it to the digitalization, the transformation that we are in currently. We always hear this, the whole world has become a global village. What makes that possible? And that is simply put, digitalization. And when you talk of digitalization, what are you talking about? Application of technology and internet to get things done. I remember many years in the past, if I can write my husband who was in Australia, then I have to write a letter, I have to go to the post office, I have to buy stamp and do all that, which will take months before it gets there. But today with my laptop in my front, within seconds, I can communicate with my children overseas, communicate with anybody in any part of the world. And that is why the world has become a global village due to digitalization. Okay, I didn't even know that my slide is up. So it's an occupation undertaking for a significant period of time for progress. It's a profession you are trained to undertake in life. You are trained as an accountant or as a financial expert. You cannot go and begin to work as a doctor. Are we together? So when you live here, based on the training you have acquired in the four walls of the classroom, you are going to become an accountant, you are going to become a financial expert, and that is where you are going to be focused. And in doing this, to be able to achieve it, to be able to fit into the current world of digital transformation that we are in, you must be digitally prepared. You must be digitally prepared. And before we go there, I want to quickly talk about your skills. We call that career skills. And when we say career skills, what do we mean? These are the abilities you must, you know, you must be able to have to enable you to do your jobs. Are we together? It is different from the, 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 the classroom training you get from the university. Before you go out there to work, you must be work ready. When you leave school, you must be able to go into some small, small trainings that will prepare you to give you that skill you need to enable you to do your job well. If my son comes home as a mechanical engineer, I will, I will take him to a very good mechanic workshop to go and practically learn it. When he goes to the labor market, that will stand him out. Just like uh, my sister told us earlier, you know, what, you know what, what experience do you have? What are you bringing on board that will stand you out? Are we together? All that is very, very important. It's not only reading book, quoting, you know, quote all your pages and then come and, and write your exam. No. You must have that skill that you are able to develop by yourself, that you are bringing on board to make you employable. I'm running ahead because this thing is very slow there because of my time. And then I said that this is the technical knowledge you got from the, the technical knowledge you, um, that you got from the classroom is different from the career skill. Your skill, you should be able to get it practically. Do some trainings on your own practically at every spare time you have your, your holiday. Say, mommy, daddy, I need to register with this. I need to go to this computer school within this uh, holiday period. All those certificates, all those get proper. And then now I need to rush quickly because of this, like I said before, application of technology and the use of internet in the conversion of data processes for business decisions. Today you are coming to my organization, I'm going to employ you. I'll ask you, what is the digital school you are bringing on board? I remember those years we go to the bank, we go and queue up online, endless hours for us to be able to do one transaction or the other. But today, banks now, they look for young upcoming ones Apart from the university training they have that are coming with strong digital skills, the computer technology skills that can do some things, killing times, you know, reducing costs on the, on the organization to enable the management to take critical decisions that will see move the business forward. Are we together? I say it is crucial for employees to be equipped with the basic digital skills and keep pace with continuous technological development. Every day, technological development is advancing. Every day, things are changing. 
every day life is changing. Improvement every day. And you must be able to, apart from what you are going through in the university, you're normal to, you must be able to read on your own. Go to Google, carry out lots of research, prepare yourself. If you see opportunity for ch uh, short trainings that are even, so there are so many short free trainings online. You should be able to, you know, to, to key into such opportunity and get yourself digitally equipped so that when you go to the labor market, that will help you, that will stand you out. Now, what are the advantages of digitalization? Why do we embrace technology? I remember many years in my organization, we'll be carrying one file from one table to the other. Bureaucratic bottleneck will be causing delays, unnecessary delays. But now that digitalization has taken over, we have converted almost all our uh, uh, files to digital copies. All you need to do, go to the system, attend to this, attend to that, even do your, your signings online. That makes things faster. You move things faster. Even there's that uh, networking, even among workers themselves. So if you are coming to the organization looking for a job and you already have this knowledge, you have trained yourself very, very well, apart from the qualification you are bringing in, and you can bring this on board, I tell you, you are going to sell even more than your colleagues that are bringing in application looking for a job. Ease of access to information, that is digitalization. The World Wide Web, such as the WWW, all of us will be hearing this. You go to any website now, whatever you are looking for, you are able to get it there. Then mobility, better communication, information, collaboration, creativity, problem-solving skills. All these are digital skills that are necessary. And you cannot get that right now, but you taking time on your own to develop yourself, to look for opportunities to be able to undertake these trainings and then come prepared with such a skill that will stand you out. And now, what are the examples of these digital skills we've been talking about that I said you need, which will prepare you even differently from the technical trainings you acquire from the classrooms? Number one, I said, for example, digital marketing, social marketing, all these very important. When you go to the internet, you can see all these courses to do on your own to prepare you. If you go to even business centers, you can do all these things, and then before you know it, as you are coming with that in your CV, it's going to sell you more. Business data analytics, all these very, very critical. You are analyzing past data, you are comparing it with current data so that you, you, the, the, the business organization will be able to know their position better. And then we talk about coding, thank you. I'm giving the example now, I'll just talk about them quickly. Coding, clouding, and artificial intelligence. That is where the world is now. Digital marketing, social marketing is almost the same thing. Using digital media platform to promote products and services online. This is what I'm selling. You go online, you project this, this, this uh, product, you project the services, and you are going to get the buyers for them. You should be able to know how to do this, and this will stand you out as you come in looking for a job in an organization. Business analytics, application of techniques and procedures to investigate past and present data to obtain business insight. This I've already explained. If you come to my organization, you have this skill. I won't waste time in employing you. I'm putting you in the account department because I know we need you. Coding. When you talk of coding, computer programming. Creating a set of instructions for the computer. If you come and you even know how to do programming, to give instructions to the computer to enable the job to be done quicker and faster and reducing costs, why will I not employ you? Artificial intelligence is the in thing. This is a branch of computer science that emphasizes the development of intelligent machines. And these machines, they think and work like humans in speech recognition, problem solving, learning, etc., etc. That is where the world is now. Develop yourself technologically. Know how to use the digital devices available to you. On holidays, you can go for such trainings, prepare yourself, equip yourself, and be sellable. These days, we hear that when students come out of the university, they are not employable. Why are they not employable? Because what you are not coming with them. And for you to get these things, you have to go for such training, develop yourself after the classroom training, and you are going to stand out, and you are going to do well in the digital world that we are in today. Thank you very much because of our time. Thank you very much. Can we please have Dr. Tak to give his lecture?
Hello? All right. So, a lot has been said, and I don't think I, I don't want to bore you with all the details. I'm sure you have already learned a lot from all the presentation. I know we're talking about employability, but I want to show you the other way. When I joined Shell in 1997, we had a total workforce of about 5,000. And out of that 5,000, finance function maybe around four, 500. But as we speak today, I'm not sure Shell has up to 2,500 employees. And so what has happened, one, because of all the challenges around our economy, uh, Shell and other oil companies, they have divested. They have sold some of their interest in the country. And the other thing that has also happened is that some jobs have been found out. Some jobs have been eliminated. There are more, no more needed in the mainstream company. For example, those days we used to have drivers who were share staff. We used to have receptionists who were share staff. But all that, no more. You know, they have contracted it out. So what am I saying? In as much as we are talking about employability, we should also think about how you can come out to create jobs. Because the reality in Nigeria now is that there are no jobs. Unemployment is about 33%. So as you're preparing your mind to go out there, dust your CV, and prepare, get all the soft skills, and be ready to go into organization, you also be at the back of your mind, how can I create jobs? How can I be an employer of labor? How can I create value? using all the tools that we have talked about, especially the digital tools. And in doing that, you need to understand your environment. And then you also need to look at the future. Look at the political environment. Look at the economic environment. Look at the social environment, the population, the consumer behavior of our time. And of course, very importantly, you need to look at the prevailing technology. Like Ambassador said, artificial intelligence, robots, Internet of Things, they have taken over many jobs. So like accountants, there are some basics, so you can, you can grade your work in different levels. So you generate report, you keep the books, you disseminate information. Those are the basics. And the reality is that machines, computers, algorithms, artificial intelligence have taken over that level of job. So as we are here today now, we need to begin to think and realize that humans are actually fighting with machines. So Fellow humans may not be your competitor. Your real competitor are the machines, computers, models that have been built to take over some jobs. The point is that you may not be able to win machines because with some of the models, some of the algorithms that have been built have now acquired a sort of human intelligence. And so since you cannot beat machines, what are you going to do? You are going to collaborate. So human and machines, you are going to be working together. That, that is the new world. So we have to be prepared for this new world. And so I'm happy that you are here. You can interact with us, with the experts, with the specialists. And that opportunity can still continue after this conference, I mean uh, this workshop. So it is important that you realize what is happening in your environment. It's also important that you realize what is happening in the global economy. 
the geopolitical conflicts like what is happening in Russia and uh, Ukraine. You need to understand the impact that COVID-19 has created in terms of global production and the impact on supply chain. It takes so much now to import and export goods. And these patterns have been disrupted in terms of working. Like our sister said, most people are working from homes now. And like I was talking with her, uh, some companies are calling back their staff and staff are even resisting. They don't want to go back to the office. So that is a pattern that is likely to continue. So what am I saying? You need to realize what is happening and be able to position yourself to take advantage of this emerging economy. And so, what are you going to do in terms of job creation, in terms of value creation? So, there are three things you need to combine together. One is the problem. Yes. So, you need to use the problem for your own advantage. For example, of course, you know in Nigeria we have several, several problems. Uh, we have been disrupted here many times with power, issue of insecurity, I mean transportation, health, education, all kinds of problems. So you have problem on the one side, and then you now have yourself, your business idea to leverage on this problem and then you have the IT or the digital capabilities. So you have the problem, you have your business acumen, and then you have the digital capabilities. So if you look at the payment space, issue of payment, some young people, I think one of them is a graduate of Covenant University, they brought about the pay stack. You know, if you want to book your flight now, you just go there book and then money will be transferred to the organization like the airline and then the account will be debited so they, they, there's an interface so young people build that interface similar to flutter wave i'm sure many of us were booked uh right either with uber or taxify so they have understood the problem and then they have a solution so to thrive in the emerging economy is all about solving problem. That's how you make money. Identify the problem, find a solution, using technology, then you'll be money. So the other thing I also want to say is that you should not despise little opportunities you have. There's a young man I read about recently, he's the MD of Landway. Uh, is okay. So I'm rounding up. So is the MD of Landway is a multi-billion real estate company. How did he get the idea? He was going to the market to sell his mother in the Lagos market, selling fabrics, and then he developed the digital marketing skill. He was marketing properties for people, and at the end, he was able to set up his own company. So in some way. The digital skill is at the center. Our sisters have talked so much about the soft skill. So to thrive either as an employee or as an employer of labor, you will need, of course, your technical skill, especially at the entry level. And then you need the business skills, which I've talked about, understanding the business model, because at the end, companies, they want to make money. So as you are coming into the organization, how do you impact their bottom line? How do you help them to make money? How do you make them to grow? So you need to be able to add value there. And of course, we've talked about people skill. How do you relate with people? How do you influence people? How do you make friends? You know, nobody likes to be criticized, especially in the public. So you need to know how to manage people, either they are your superiors, or they are your subordinate. So you need to be able to develop very sound people management skills. And of course, leadership skill. There's a book I will recommend that you read. It's by Charles Carnegie, and it's about 
How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's a very powerful book. In fact, I'm still reading it now. So it exposes you on how to manage relationships because at the end of it all, relationships matter. There was a young man that we wanted to release in our office because technically he was not very sound. But then he had very good relationship with people. So in as much as we did not have a space for him in the finance team, we had to look for a job somewhere for him within the organization. So at the end, he did not lose his job. So this further buttresses the need for you to have good relationship with people because this is a very powerful skill. And of course, you need to have integrity. Ethics is very important, and then you need to be professional. So my time is up. I'm available, and I'm sure other speakers are also available. You can interact with us. We can share more with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Can we have Miss Orale Nancy to discuss? Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon to everyone present. So right now, we're moving to our panel section. And with our hands, I would like to welcome our discussants to the seats here. I'd like to first welcome Ms. Ab um, Ambassador Vivian to the seats, please. Mrs. Sarah Erin to our seats, please. And Dr. Titus to the seats, please. You're welcome, uh, you're welcome, sir. So in this period, in this section, we'll be discussing on career. So are you giving your t uh, talk and everything? So right now, we'll be moving on to like career talks, like questions that have been asked, we we'll want to ask you in this period. Do I have them listed? We don't have time to get from others here. Can I have a please? Thank you. Okay. Firstly, Ma, answer. So I would first like to ask, um, in a situation by which one is being forced, or maybe because of the parents' persuasion to go and study a particular course, like now let me say the person doesn't have interest in accounting or any other course. So what would, how should the person derive satisfaction, or how should the person react to such situation, and how would they be able to manage themselves in? In such situations by which they, are, they met themselves in. Mrs. Erin, can you please answer? Okay, thank you so much. Um, that's quite challenging. And um, if we look at such scenarios that had played out in time past, you see that it's either the student himself or herself does not even know what he or she likes. And that's the reason why, as um, students, we need to know what, where our passion lies. Because uh, in response to that question, I would say, if you know how to persuade your parents, your mom, your dad, when you want something, you need an addition to your pocket money, for example, and you succeed at that, I think it's just the same skill required. You were able to sell the reasons why that pocket money was increased. And so you need to be able to convincingly sell to your parents or your guardian the um, course of study where you, you, you find your interest in. But um, are there situations where students have found themselves in th those spaces and they don't think that is where they should be? Okay, I would add that um, there are possibilities to cross carpet. Okay, if you think you shouldn't be here, where should you be? 
That's question one. Okay, so if you are saying, I don't think I'm in the right place, it was my parents, it was my guidance or whosoever that um, brought me in here, so where should you be? So if you're able to discover that, then the next line of action should be, is the school able to allow me cross carpet? Okay, I'm in 300 level, for example. I'm discovering I'm in the wrong course and I need to change direction. Will the school be willing to allow me to go even as low as 100 level to start that my preferred course? And I'll give you an example. I was, um, like I mentioned, I was in GSS3 when I discovered my passion for accounting, but my dad was of a different opinion. His opinion was, you'll be a good science student. I did sciences and eventually switched to the commercial, um, commercial session. So he was of the view that it gives you an edge over every other person in the commercial session. So go the sciences route, then you'll change later. But then I, w I went to the science class, first term SS1. I wasn't finding it interesting and I wasn't failing either. So it means if I wanted to do my father's bidding, I would come out a good student, but I wouldn't be happy. And so I knew what I wanted. And that must be the starting point. And so what did I do? After first term in science class, I walked up to him one day and, say, and gave him reasons why I don't think I should be in science class. I was passing my physics, chemistry, but I knew I was in the wrong place. And you know, without argument, he just felt <laughs> this one that she has started and she's coming back. He allowed me. And today I'm happy I took that out. Do you understand? So I, I just hope I'm able to answer that question. Thank you very much, Ma. I would like to direct this question to Ambassador Vivian. Ma, I read your citations and everything. So it's quite lengthy and, and yes, you've done a lot. You've done Thank you've you. had different things. So Ma, I would, to, I would like to ask, what was the driving force? How was it like? What was, what was pushing you to go for this um, heights you've been going to? Okay, thank you very much. I, that, that, I, I look at that question as a very, very personal one. Um, for you to excel in life, number one, you must have God. You must know how to pray. You must listen to your parents so that you don't miss it. And that upbringing from the scratch is what will define you as you grow in life to the state that you start taking your own personal decisions. And then, as a human being, you must have a personal goal. You must have a picture of yourself with God. This is what I want to be when I become so so, so, so when I get to so so age. Are you with me? That innate drive, that driving force inside you is what will lead you to your success. You will see situations in life that will discourage you. For example, like your first question. You well, this is Nigeria. We understand the situation of light. <laughs> so as I was saying before, your success depends on God. Your own... Depends on God. Your own personal innate drive. I want to succeed. I want to succeed. I want to hold on to God and also do my own part to succeed. I don't want to miss it. With that, any, every opportunity that God brings your way as you are praying, God will open your eyes to be able to key into it. When you see something that will be a discouragement, that will want to pull you back, you will not look at it and say, no, I have God. With God, I can do all things. With God, I can do valiantly. With that, you will be propelled, you will be pushed. In the aviation industry, I happen to be the first to be trained and certified as a woman in, in, in Nigeria. I had done so many courses overseas. It got to a stage that some of my colleagues were becoming even envious. Why do I say this? When some were sleeping in the house, in the night I was sitting on my system. I would be clicking on this, clicking on that, looking for relevant courses that would develop me more. That would, be, that would make me to stand out in my chosen path. Are we together? And then this digitalization tool that we're talking about was one of the things that helped me. Immediately, the knowledge of computers started coming out. I didn't wait for my organization to train me. I quickly sponsored myself to go for detailed training on computer literacy. Those were the things that propelled me. Importantly, 
having God to hold on to. Secondly, holding on to your own personal goal to be able to be a hardworking person, seizing every opportunity that comes your way. Go out of your way to do things that will stand you out. And that was what stood me out. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ma. So I would like to ask Dr. Titus, um, so you're in the oil and gas industry, right? Oil and gas. So I would like to ask, how is it like in the oil and gas industry? Because like, we have a course that is oil and gas accounting. I literally felt like, what am I doing? Then I yes, I had, a, a, had an A in the course, but like, I don't still understand what exactly that was, okay, what are we doing there, this, this, and then yes, we're calculating all sorts, but like, what is oil and gas, what is it all about? Uh, Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, there are two parts. One is the oil and gas accounting, you know, calculating all those measures. Uh, I remember very well my undergraduate project was on oil and gas accounting. So, there are a couple of things you need to do, standardize measures of oil and gas. And sincerely, like you, I didn't fully appreciate those things because you cannot really understand it so much at your level until when you get into practice. But somehow, I was interested in oil and gas, and as God will make it, my first job application was into an oil and gas company, and I got the job immediately after my youth service. So again, I was already visualizing myself working in oil and gas. So, like I said, my project, a lot of things were tailored in there. But the other part is so you, if, if you come the the lifeblood of Nigeria's finances is from oil and gas because like over 90% of our foreign exchange earnings is from the sale of crude oil and gas and so that makes it very very important so uh, technically it's about the exploration the development the production that is the, the extraction of crude oil and gas right from subsurface through the pipelines to the point you export overseas or you send to refineries. And of course, in terms of employing opportunities, almost all the professions can find job in the oil and gas industry. You have the international oil and gas companies, the Shell, Mobile, Elf, Total and Co. And of course, you also have the local players, because like I said earlier on, when Shell and Co. divested, they actually sold to the local players like Seplat, uh, another smaller oil and gas company. So you don't need to be a technical person, uh, engineer, to work in oil and gas. You have lawyers, we have HR, we have accountants who are working there. So, in some way, oil and gas is critical to even the survival of this country as it is now until we diversify into other areas. And in terms of uh, oil and gas accounting, you have your SA4, 14 rather, as it were. So, you go through the other technical things you can do. And then also, reporting of oil and gas volumes and all that. I happen to be involved in all that. So let me stop there. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I would like to ask, how have you been able to balance your life, your career, family, and everything? Has it been easy? I would like to ask Ambassador Vivian. <laughs> Okay, balancing, balancing work and career. As a woman, it was a tough one growing up before I got to the managerial level that God took me to. 
at the early stage when I started, when I, I had not started bearing children, it was a bit easy. I was all headlong into my career. But when it got to the stage that I got married and I started having children, that was a very serious, demanding, extra task. So I had to find a way to manage my home and also manage the office, office front. And having children and you are a career woman or a career person, you know, if you don't sit down to have your own personal strategy to succeed, you may fail along the line. And in doing that, I had to, you know, go out of my way to start having housemates that will help me take care of my children. And while still doing that, I had to still design a way of still closely monitoring them. So that the, the impact that I need to have as a mother in the life of my children and also the impact I need to have in the life of my husband as a wife, I made sure I did not miss that out. And in as much as I was having those meals, I still made sure that every food that is eaten in my house, I prepare them directly myself. While still managing my career. And no matter how much I work late, I don't fail to plan the next day's menu to work ahead for the home and also to plan out the work schedule for the office that I'm going to face the next morning. And I also learn to delegate a lot. And how do you delegate? You can only delegate when you are able, you know, to train those working with you allowing them to understand the job itself. You know, you know there are some bosses some, some that, that are not leaders. Those ones are bosses. There are some secrets of the job they would like to keep, not knowing that they are killing themselves. Train those that are working with you because one day to day we grow up and take over the job while you are on your way out. And that will also help you when you have this and that to do. They are desolately working and also communicating with you and the job is going on and also your home front, you have peace. So when you have your life well mapped out like that, that will help you a lot. And then when you look at our life on earth, we don't fail to recognize that our helper is God. You cannot achieve anything on earth without the help of our creator, and that is God. And how do you accomplish all these things and be able to do all these things that are expected of you as if you are uh, uh, a superman? No. All those wisdoms come from God. Do we understand? And that is what the book of James 1.5 uh, told us. Ask of knowledge, ask for wisdom, and God is there to give. And that is what has propelled us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma. Um, I'd like to ask Dr. Titus, are there days by which you feel like giving up, or like you feel fed up with what you are doing, and how have you been able to manage it? How have you been able to like deal with it? That maybe you feel like giving up, you are not. All right. So, uh, what she's saying, are there days that you are discouraged? You feel like giving up? You know, so I was discussing with uh, Sarah while we were coming. I come from a humble background, my parents were not literate. But I determined that I was going to make a difference in my family. And that that condition must stop somewhere. I'm going to stop it. So I was determined as a teenager while in secondary school that I want to make a difference in my family, in my generation. So uh, that's what I call visualization. So you need to look at yourself in future. What are you looking at? The Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. So as you're seated here now, where do you see yourself in five years, in ten years, in twenty years? So that picture has to be clear. I know you may not be able to see everything. So I was strong in focusing on my objective. So at times when I was in school, of course I was discouraged because to eat was a problem, not to talk about buying handouts or buying books. So I told myself, in as much as I determined to go to school, I will not give up. But if it were somebody that sent me to school, 
I would have just packed my books, pack everything, go back, and tell the person, until you're able to provide enough for me, I will not continue. So again, life is all about making up your mind. Challenges will come, difficulty will come, and like she said, you need God. Right from university, things were tough. Maybe you operate zero, one, zero, or zero, one, Gary and sugar. You may not even have granite to add with the Gary. But you need to make up your mind. So for me, of course, the scholarly day will come. In the university, God helped me. Along the line, I got a scholarship. So now, in the workplace, well, discouragement will come. You may work very hard. You may not get the promotion that you desire. That will not make you to give up. You need to encourage yourself in the Lord. Again, look at your objective. Look at where you want to be. That will keep you going in life. So let, let me just stop there. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I would like to ask Ms. Erin, uh, how do you know you are employable? Or what advice will you give a graduate with no working experience? What advice will you give the person that is, like you just leaving school with no, like, no plans, nothing, nothing, nowhere, nowhere to work? What advice will you give to such Thank you so much. So um, I think the crux of that is mentorship. So you need a mentor. Okay, so I'm sure at one point or the other, you would have seen someone that you sort of like, like the way the person's work ethics or the profession that person is in, and that might have been your point of attraction. So if you have not trod that path before, the tendency is you wouldn't understand because I know it by way of experience. It's different from I was told this is how it works. Okay, and so if I'm sharing with you out of experience what the road looks like, the tendency is that you will not miss your way. Am I right? Okay, so you need a mentor to give you guidance. And so if you are here and you are, in short, from 100 level, and you do not have a mentor. When um, I, I have mentors, not um, direct, not all of them are direct mentors. I have mentors that I watch from afar. I'll give you an example. In my place of work, I was privileged to work with an amazing woman, an outstanding woman. And so, you know, I looked at her and I envied the skills that I saw in her. Her leadership skills were top notch. And I told myself, this is what I want to become tomorrow in this profession. And what was I doing? I just check what she does. Now, it's been how many years? I think about five years she's been out of my office. And when I want to take some decisions, you know what I do? I say, what would Mrs. So-so and so and so do if she were caught in this um, scenario? And so getting a mentor, you cannot shy away from that. Now, how do you get to know if you are employable? The truth is, you cannot, um, you cannot assess that based on what you have learned in the academic space. And so, try sounding out those that are um, leaders in organizations where you'd like to work. And if possible, set up a mock-up session, mock-up interview session to, <laughs> to show forth the skills you carry presently. And after that mock-up, ask for feedback and work on the feedback. I think that would help you a great deal. Thank you very much, Ma. I really appreciate it. And because of our time, we'll not be able to take more questions again. I really want to appreciate you, Ma. I want to appreciate you, Sir, for the time well spent. And I count myself really privileged to be seated and guys and asking you guys question god bless you ma god bless you sir Thank you very much and i hope you've been able to learn one or two things from this thank you
Thank you very much. Our panelists, can we give them once again a round of applause? Because our time is fast spent, please. Don't worry, God is in control. <laughs> please, can someone, please, can you help me pack these chairs? So let's have a photograph with our panelists and um, we move on to the next item on the agenda. We need to leave here by two, latest. So, just like we did for the first um, speaker, so we are going to do the same for our panelists. 100 and 20 level students, please can you step up now? Let's be fast, please. We don't have that time. 100 and 200 level students, please be fast. Please, some of you, can you move to this side? Why are you running away from this side? in Jesus name. Thank you very much. We hope to see you some other time. God bless you. I believe that this session has been enlightening, right? I hope you enjoy yourself. Are you? 
That's very good. Thank you very much. So, without wasting our time, we have time. We have um, um, Institute of Shared Accountants of Nigeria, Ali Moshaw, um, District. So, the ISCO, you know, in High Khan, we have different districts, just like in church. You understand? You know, in churches, you have different parishes, different districts, different branches. So, also in um, our profession, High Khan, we have different branches all over the world, and they are scattered everywhere. So, we have a branch around us here in Alimosho um, um, local government. So, we have the Alimosho district. Um, for high camp. So, the officials are here to tell you to know more about your profession. So, I'm going to I'm going to welcome them. We have the chairman of the Icon Ali Mashor District Society in person of Mr. Olushola Aremu Oweyele. You are welcome, sir. Also, we have we have the deputy vice chairman in person of Mr. Ali. Ola Rewaju Dauda. You are welcome, sir. We also have our, we also have the social and publicity secretary in person of Mrs. Mojisola Are Ola. You are welcome, man. We have the general secretary here, Mr. Semil Lukman. You are welcome, sir. Thank you very much. We have also the Assistant General Secretary in person of Mr. Odu, Odu Baku Saburi, FCA. You are welcome, sir. Eh? Oh, Odu Baku Saburi. Thank you. You are welcome, sir. Thank you very much. So, now they are here for Cash Dem Young, and um, I'm going to call the the President, Mr. Olushola Aremu, Oweyele, to give his speech. So, sir, you have 10 minutes for, for that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great Nuasa. Great Nuasa. That's very nice. Um, we thank God Almighty for giving us this opportunity to uh, come here. Uh, Olushola Uyele is my name. I'm the chairman. I can Alimosho this society. And um, first of all, we want to appreciate the vice chancellor of the university, Professor Bandele. and members of ICANN Alimashor Society, I sincerely welcome you to this gathering, which is aimed at sensitizing students and members of staff on opportunities available in becoming a professional accountant, that is, chartered accountant. As you all know, ICANN was established by Act of Parliament number 15 of 1965, to regulate the practice of accountancy profession in Nigeria and to set standards to be attained by persons seeking to be members of the profession. The seven faculties created by Council of ICANN for members capacity building and support for specialization in, in distinct areas of accountancy are as follows. The one is audits, investigation and forensic accounting, second, taxation and fiscal policy management, the third one, information technology and consultancy, then we have financial reporting, also insolvency and corporate re-engineering, corporate finance management, finance management, and the last one, public finance management. I can use the founding I'm prominent member of the International Federation of Accountants, IFA, 
this body that regulates the accountant supervision worldwide. ICANN vision is to be a leading global functional body, and our vision statement is to provide world class to the accountants and to regulate and continually enhance the ethical standards and technical competence in public interest. Also, the motto of the Institute is accuracy, as you know, and integrity. We have careers in accounting as follows. Who is an accountant? An accountant is a professional who is responsible for keeping and interpreting financial records. Most accountants are responsible for a wide range of finance-related tasks, either for individual, clients, or for large, larger businesses and organizations and employing them. Who is a chartered accountant? The chartered accountant is someone who retains a membership of the ICANN or any other accounting professional body. ICANN will only allow members after a series of examinations have been passed and a certain amount of work experience has been undertaken. Professional accountants of today have careers that use a wide variety of skills applicable to highly specialized roles as explained by the constants. And we have this one, why the foundation of accounting is based on uniform accounting practices. There are many different ways for accountants to apply these principles. The first one, public accounting jobs. You can be cost estimator, enrolled agent, forensic accountant, real estate appraiser, tax accountant, tax preparer. Under the private accounting jobs, you can be an accounts clerk, accounts payable receivable clerk, accounts information system specialist, actuary accountant, insurance accountant, bookkeeper, budget analyst, capital accountant, payroll accountant, and the rest of them. Also, we have financial services. Under financial services, you can be business valuation specialist, financial planner, financial analyst, and tax consultant. What accountants do? What do you do as an accountant? Accountants, accountants work with individuals, small businesses, large operations, non-profit and government accounts, government agencies to prepare and organize financial and tax documents. Careers in different areas of accounting. I think. Uh, Maybe because we are taking our tea or we are taking our mirror, attention is divided. Can I have your attention, please? Please. These are among the many tasks that accountants perform for their clients. As an accountant, you are organizing and maintaining financial records, evaluating financial operations and the rest of them. We have different careers, careers in different areas of accounting. It is often said that one of the biggest career decisions accountants make takes place very early on when deciding which general area of accounting to specialize in. This is because the entire career part with regard to the types of clients and accounts works with the types of education and professional certificates they will need, the level of education they will complete, and the very nature of work they perform would be dictated by decisions. Summarize keeps points for accountants. These are 10 types of practices you can, be, you can do as an accountant. I've said you can be a forensic accountant, tax accounting also, information system accountant, government accountant, audit and assurance and cost accounting, and the rest of them. The entire skills every accountant needs you need analytical skill as explained by the discussants, knowledge related to your professional need. You need organizing skills, critical thinking, interpersonal communication is very important, adaptability, time management, industry knowledge, then spreadsheet proficiency, team collaboration is also very important. Then 10 business ideas for accountants. We'll share this thing with you because of time. We'll share, lot, we'll share the papers with you so that you can read later. So the following are the 10 business 
ideas for accountants, tax preparation, business advisory, small business preparation, and also online accounting and finance coaching for students, lecturing and professional uh, books publishing. Now, becoming a member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, that is the route to become a Chartered Accountant in Nigeria, are of two ways. The first one is registration and passing, registration and passing accounting technician for West Africa examination part one to three. And we are so happy and delighted that so many of you are students of accounting technicians for West Africa. And then you need to pass this before proceeding to professional examinations. Atwa exam are open to all level certificates holders who possesses five credits, including it and mass, and also ND graduates in any discipline. Aswa exams are held simultaneously in all the West African member countries in March and September yearly. And also, you are also aware that Anchor University is the center for Atwa exam. Then B, the second one, only graduates from Protecting, that is HND, and university like you, as well as holders of actual finance advocates, are allowed to register professional examination of ICANN. ASWA examination now, let's concentrate on ASWA. The examination consists of three, three parts. Part one, you have basic accounting processing, economics, business plan, communication skills. Part two, we have principal and parts of financial accounting, public sector accounting, quantitative analysis, formation technology. Then the final one is part three, you have principal of auditing, cost accounting, preparing tax computation and returns, and then management. So this part one and three, part one to three are streamlined um, with your syllabus here. So you don't have any problem in passing the actual exam. So what does your actual certificate offer you? You have recognition in five West African countries, such as Nigeria, Ghana, Gambia, Syria, alone, and Liberia. And if you have the opportunity to go outside Nigeria, you can work in the West African countries we've mentioned. As you also have a central from the whole or the foundation of the ICANN um, uh, syllabus, that is the skill level operational syllabus, which is equivalent to exemption of BSc in accounting from accredited institution. We also grant you employment into middle-level cadre in public and private sectors if you have ATSWA. Also, ATSWA is used for admission into some universities, and then you'll be formally admitted as associate member of the Association of Accounting Technicians Scheme and use the title ATSWA after your names and the rest of them. Studentship registration, exemption, and scholarship. Issue relating to this above will be discussed during question and answer. We will have the time. But all inquiries should be addressed to the Registrar Chief Executive, ICANN, plus 16 in the Taylor Street, Victoria Island, PO Box 1580, Lagos, and the phone number is also there. And also the website, you can also write www.icann.org.ng or www.icann.org.ng and so on like that. So also you can email students affairs at ICANN.org.ng. So uh, we thank you very much for giving us the opportunity. But um, we just want to advise you, looking at, to be an accountant, you may think it's not easy, it's an easy thing if you're hardworking. And we want to advise you, if you look at these people here, they started like you. I also started like a village boy. I mentioned this two weeks ago, ago when I was uh, being decorated or being elected or as the ICANN uh, chairman at Limoshow this Society. I started from somewhere. So don't say you don't have money to do anything. The little you have, you can save and start writing your exam. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Um, please, we'll give just two questions. So, if you hands. All right, sir. My name is... My 
name is Wani Fushi. I'm a business admin department. I lecture management and business law. It is one and it. I'm asking this question for the benefit of our students and also for see what they can do about it. What the Because of the voluminous nature, it makes students to fail. When we started HSCR 2017, I started with them. I lectured my own area of specialization, business law. Two of us lecture business law, and one lawyer, and I and two of us also lecture management in city. But you discover that by the time a student get to HS2, this one, QT, PSA, they fail. And by the time they fail the two times, they, they are not interested. Then I was speaking to one of the children. I said, why, why did I can't load this particular song? Is it a, a strategy to make sure that they want to be delayed student or discouraging student? So I want to put to you that, please, I want you to do something about that particular two uh, uh, cause Because in education, as a lecturer, when you set six questions and then this, you ask students to answer for. And after the examination, you discover that one particular question, nobody answer it. Uh, the next time, you know that that particular question is either it is not structured well or it's too, you know, uh, bogus. So please, I want I can do something about this QT and PSA so that it will begin to help as well to progress. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for the feedback. We are very happy and uh, very delighted to, to hear from you, especially uh, our facilitators that train our students for us. Uh, sincerely, yours, uh, when my chairman was uh, addressing the qualification and the privilege that those who ask the qualification of uh, artworks, uh, what they have privilege to do, you will have known that it's not a free, it's not a free ticket to the icon uh, professional level. If you listen very well, you, you realize that he said uh, the guardians of this scheme will equivalent to BSc accounting from accredited university. It's not all the BSc from non-accredited uh, university that have the same qualification as our ATS. That is the first privilege. However, uh, I'm also a product of that scheme. That is the reason why I have to say it first before my chairman contributes to it. I know exactly what you are talking, sir. But believe me, if you have that uh, patience, and you are able to maneuver that scheme and you are able to qualify from that scheme is from experience a product of eight years have a rapid growth to ICAM qualification from research that is the reason i can loaded it I will, I will not say it's deliberate or neither not deliberate as a control 
so that it will groom them, catch them young. It will group them professionally. If they can be able to manage and escape it anywhere they go, because some people may have that qualification and not proceed in the ICANN and representing ICANN everywhere as is a product as Atwa. That is the reason why for that. However, your message will relate to the institute. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, I'm so glad that your question, sir. But one thing I want you to know, um, don't be discouraged in whatever you do. As students, I'm an employer of labor. I employ nine chartered accountants in my office today. And all of them, do you know what I do? I prefer. I'm not discriminating though. Anywhere you come, whether you are outside, Yoruba, Ibo, or anything, or ladies, I don't, I don't mind. You when you start from eight years, most of them started from eight years. They are very good. I failed QA, quantitative technique, I failed it. So there is no there is no special thing in it. When I failed it, whether it's loaded or not loaded, you go back. Do you understand? It's not just an arithmetic thing we are talking about. And certain questions, sir, if I may tell you, I'm an examiner for ICANN. The books, if you go through advanced taxation, auditing, and the rest of them, you may see my name in the study parts. You as lecturers, we invite you, ICANN, we invite you, come and write this thing, set questions. You set questions. It's not ICANN. ICANN is not from heaven. The questions are not from heaven. Do you understand? Is lecturers from the university, from ACO, from uh, IFE, from anywhere in Nigeria, they come together. They look at the syllabus. They design that. Academic syllabus, the syllabus you have here, definitely will be a little bit different from what we have over there. So don't think it's loaded. Do you get me? You do more. I can expect you, professional, when you are a professional, you want to do more. So when you talk of quantitative techniques, People who are mathematicians from the university come and set the questions. They are the one. Somebody like you who is an admin one will come and set management. Management two is loaded. It's not only PSA or QA that has been failed. And let me tell you, students, my students, let me call you my students, but my sons and daughters. You see, you are so lucky this time. When we were writing the exam, you fail one, you fail all. But now I can start now sit down together and say, okay, don't discourage these people. These are Sorosoke type. They don't want to walk. They don't want to, yes. They want to eat, they want to dine, they want to do everything. You see, let's relax the thing. That is why they give you one, you pass one, they give it to you. That is pay as you go system. But when we started our own, we didn't have that opportunity. That doctor you are looking, look up three of them, they are sitting, when they sat down there. syllabus have an idea and most of you you just see questions in the exam you don't attempt the instruction is attempt all even if you can't do much go through do something you pick something there you may think it's not relevant it is relevant when you write something down so sir is i can exam or i can syllabus is not designed to face students at all but we need to work hard there must be difference between academic and professional and exam. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. We have room for just one more question. Um, my question is, 
for those that are not doing ATS. Because the way they are talking about ATS, ATS is... because I lost my dad at my early age. But that as is me, having finished my HND, I now took exception. So eight years exam, our school was, luckily for us, our school was accredited. Then, Federal Polytechnic in Laro. So then, they look at our syllabus, all the courses, and we took exception. When I, when I finished my NYC, when I came back to Lagos, then I started, I started my ICANN exam. There is no peculiarity that people that did their own eight years because, as my chairman said, as my deputy said, we are all, 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 all hands are not equal. They come from different families. Some people can afford it. Concurrently, some people are running the program. I have some, some of my friends during those days, they came from there to do family. They qualified before we graduated. So that's it. So it's, it's not that they are peculiar, but it depends on individuals, as they have said, and if all the students have said, put your best in anything you are doing. So room was not busy in a day. My chairman have, I've been saying it every time, every time, a village man, a village boy. All of us have a story to tell. As young as I am, from my early age, I know that I passed through. But the zeal is that if not anything you want to be in life, put all into it. And with God, all things are possible. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for that. I'm sure we've gained a lot from this. It's now time for our quiz. Can we please have Ms. Grace Oluwadapo? For Oluwadara, sorry, for the quiz. Before the quiz, um, Nuasa Esco, please let's have a photograph with the icon executive. Nuasa Esco, Nuasa Esco. Good afternoon, everybody.
Good afternoon, everybody. I know we are tired, but this is like almost the last section. And it's time for the quiz competition from 100 level to 300 level. So we have two participants each, or do I say contestants now? So we know ourselves. Can you please come out to avoid wasting time? Please. Better still, just bring your chairs with you so that you don't waste time. Please. For the 100 level, we have Chinaza, Ayamu, then Olumide Omole. For 200 level, Olukare Tolu and James Omojo. Please, I will expect you guys to sit together. So, and Emmanuel Ogunti, please, for 300 level. So, we have 20 questions, and we're going to be picking. The number you pick is the questions you'll be asked. Now, it's more like we're going back to things that we've done. So the fact that we're having three levels here, we understand that they might not have done like the 100 level. So that's why we are going to secondary school questions and a mixture of university questions. So 100 level, pick your number from 1 to 20. Number two. Number two. In accounting, what's the meaning of scrap value? You have one minute. Scrap value. Scrap value is the value of an asset after depreciation, like after the, estimate, after the lifespan of the asset. Mm, that's correct. That's correct. So, 200 level. Your number. Number five. Number five. Okay. If I had only one statement and wanted to review the overall health of a company, which statement would I use and why? If I had only one statement and wanted to review the overall health of a company, which statement would I use? Okay, so um, if you want to review the health of a company, we we'll use the statement of financial position. That is incorrect. You use the statement of cash flow to review that. 300 level, pick your question. Seven, seven. Seven. What is the basic accounting equation? Um, asset is equal to equity plus liabilities. Asset is equal to what? Capital or equity plus liabilities. Okay, that's correct. So back to you, hundred level. Pick your question. Number six. Number six. Number six. <laughs> Define departmental accounting. Departmental accounting uh, is an account prepared at the end of the year to compare the performance of each department. Okay, that's partially correct. So, do we give it to them? Okay. So, <laughs> oh, you're 200 level. Your question. 10. Huh? Listen, 10. 10. 10. What do you understand by tangible real account and intangible real account? Tangible real account 
Tangible and intangible assets. Tangible assets are assets that we can see, feel, and touch. Okay. Or intangible assets, they cannot be seen, just like a value, such as goodwill. That's correct. 300 level. Two. It has been taken. One. The full meaning of gap. GAP is general account, accepted accounting. Generally accepted accounting principle. That is correct. <laughs> Hundred level. Pick your question. Question 10. Question has been chosen. 11. The full meaning of IASB. International Accounting Standard Board. Correct. Number four. The elements of financial statements are contained in the statement of financial position and statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. Now list three of any three elements on that this. Under each of them, like just list any three randomly. For statement of financial position, we have the equity, we have equity, assets, liabilities. Statement of profit and loss, we have um, expenses, we have the income, we have sales. Correct, that is correct. 300 level. Nine. Number nine. The reason why totals of a trial balance may not agree in the first instance may be due to occurrence of errors. List five of these types of errors. Five. Please come again. No. Trial balance may not agree in the first instance and it may be due to occurrence of errors, list any of any five of this type of errors. I will not make balance. Yes. One sided omission. Yeah. Understatement of one account. Overstatement of one account. Um, error of principle affecting one account. Um, um, error of original. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> But funny enough, I was expecting error of omission, error of commission. Yes, they are part of it. Errors that. No, no, wait, wait. No, no. Those ones don't affect. Yes. Okay, that's error on my path. Sorry, give it to them then. Thank you. So, 100 level, back to you. Number 17. Number? 17. What are the components of IAS1? The components of IAS1. IS1 is how to present financial statement. Then number one, we have statement of financial position, 
statement of profit and loss, statement of cash flow. We'll still give it to them because they were just meant to have said the presentation of financial statements. And since we're all accountants, I believe you should know what is on by that. They mixed statement of changes in equity and the notes in account. So 200 level. Thirteen. 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 What is the difference between accounting and auditing? Accounting is is like the representation and representation of transactions. Why auditing is like cross checking them and also auditing is like a review on the transactions that have already been posted to make sure that there's correct okay. like Okay, we'll review. give it to them. Because they tried, actually. They've not, you guys have not done auditing, right? And auditing, reviewing of statements, but then by an independent body. Do you get? So we'll give it to them. 300 level, your number. 20. The primary source of company law, which establishes the requirements for financial reporting, by all companies in Nigeria is the primary source of company law which establishes the requirements for financial reporting by all companies in Nigeria is companies and other matters at correct so 111. This will be the last round. The last round. So number eight. Number eight. What is a credit note? A credit note is a document sent by the sell from the buyer to correct uh, the charge. Repeat. Credit note is a document sent by the seller to the from the seller to the buyer to correct and overcharge. Correct. <laughs> Two hundred level. We'll, we'll break it. Oh yeah, Two hundred. Number eighteen. Eighteen. The fundamental assumptions which embody the preparation of financial statement is called the fundamental assumptions which embody the preparation of financial statement is called accounting accounting conventions. Uh, yeah, correct. Accounting concepts. Uh, so we'll just give them. It's close. 300 level. 17. It has been picked. 19. Define the concept of ethics. Ethics. Just ethics. Just concept, like generally. We like. have. Um, we have independence, we have, um, we have, when uh, a professional in accounting is independent, it's when he's not um, subjected or under submission to anybody, he gives his true view of the report without any, without being biased. So we have um, um, integrity, we have 
um, honesty, we have um, accuracy, reliability, reliability, yes. Okay, that's actually correct. A round of applause for the... So we we'll try again. They tried, actually, most of it. When you say it should divine, it should... If you tell him to mention five principles of code of ethics, it's different from what is ethics. Yeah, we will define it, sir. So if you say what is ethics, there is a difference between what is ethics and five code. Did sir, you ask them together? That was for that explanation. Fine. There is difference between five fundamental principles of code of ethics. Then what is ethics? Ethics. Let them define ethics. If they cannot, give them half. Okay. Ethics. Ethics are rules and regulations governing the um, activities that an accountant or professional activities that an accountant uses in his line of work. Activities, whether personal activities or activities, you know, law, regulation, code of conduct. And that's ethics. There are different definitions now. It's correct. <laughs> okay. So at the end of this lap, we discover that 100 and 300 level, they are tied. So 200 level, thank you very much for participating. And Okay, so the first level to start talking, the first level to start talking. The first level to start talking. Name the four people that spoke to us today. The four people invited, no, don't look at me, you have to face the front. The four invited guests that spoke today. Ah. <laughs> Come down. Jeff. Okay. Jeff, Jeff, this. Um, Jeff, um, start Dr. talking. Dr. Um, Ambassador Dr. Um, Ambassador Dr. Vivian and Mrs. Sarah Erin. And then there is okay. I would have given them, but since they did not mention like the full name, let them try. Let them try. Let them try. Sir. <laughs> okay. Um, so we are looking for winner, right? Please, audience. This is a quiz. I'm, I'm expecting you to be silent. Now, let me ask you the question. What is the theme of today's program? The theme. What is the theme? Enhancing employability employability skills in our competitive markets today. Thank you. Anybody? Do you have? Well, I think it can go to 311. So, thank you. So thank you very much for participating. We have gifts for just the winners. So 100 level. Huh? You mean? Okay, the three. But I think there has to be. Anyways, thanks for participating. You can go back to your seats. Okay, now.
Okay. Um, the 200 level students should please come back outside. At least for participating. Where are they? Come out, Naba. Don't be shy. <laughs> so, for participating, you know it's little, but just help us. They are beautiful virals. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. A round of applause for them. <laughs> so, for the second position. For participating. And to our winners, our cash prize will be going to our winners, the 300 level students. A round of applause for them. So thank you very much for participating with us. <laughs> thank you very much, and God bless you. You can all go back to your seats. A very big congratulations to the winners of the quiz. Can we now please have Miss Emily Adiola for the vote of thanks? Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. So we really want to thank everyone for participating in today's event. Like we are grateful you are here. So in the absence of our top, so in the absence of our top management staff that came here, we would still like to acknowledge their support and love and effort towards this event. So I would like to thank the entire management of Angkor University for their support, for their generosity. I mean, they helped us with this program, and we are really grateful for that. And we also like to extend our greetings to our esteemed guests who came here from far and near to attend this program. We are very, very grateful to them, even if they are not here now. I also want to thank the deans and their representatives, and our able HOD and for helping us with this program and assisting him is um, Mrs. Ajibola. We really want to say thank you to both of them for helping us. So my vote of thanks will not be complete if I do not acknowledge the presence of the students. Thank you so very much. You guys are amazing. You guys are amazing. And, and for the other students that are not accounting and finance students that came, and they attended. Thank you so much. God bless you. Now, to, do, to those people that helped us with the technical arrangements, we see you and we are saying thank you. To those that helped us with the stage, uh, stage arrangement, like some people were here yesterday and they left like after nine. Thank you so much. Really appreciate. For those that helped us with the lightning, the catering, the registration, the press, Thank you very much. For those that helped us with the media and our ushers, we thank you so much. God bless you. So something that really struck me during the program was when our Vice Chancellor talked about our discipline, that we should be more accessible, we should be more accountable, and that we should be more adorable. So that is one thing for me that really struck me in this program, and I hope we've learned a thing or two. So finally, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you again. God bless you. Can we now have Mr. Zadok to give the closing prayer? Mr. Peter Zadok. Peter. Let us bow in prayer. In Jesus' name. 
Hello, Pri. We thank, want to thank you for the success of this program. We pray that you that have done this great thing shall give us more grace to experience more of this in Jesus' name. Hello, just want, we want to thank you for everything we've learned here. We pray that it shall be a seed that shall grow and bear forth fruit in our lives in Jesus' name. Hello, thank you for the host. We want to thank you for the guest speakers. We want to thank you for the panelists. Hello, we pray that we shall bless them for this knowledge you have impacted into our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Hello, I want to pray for them and everyone present here. I shall go and them save journeys back home in the mighty name of Jesus. Hello, thank you, Lord, for answer prayers. In Jesus' name we are praying. God grant your journey messes back to your destinations.